Should I start it right now? Yeah. Okay. Oh, Canada, our home and native lands, true faith, true love, in all thy sons command, with glory we see the rise of true Lord, strong and free from far and wide. Oh, Canada, we stand on God fully. God, keep our lands glorious and free. Oh, Canada, we stand on God for thee. Oh, Canada, we stand on God for thee. Welcome to Joe Sports Channel. You can follow me on Joe the Fighting Jane Instagram. You can follow me on Taker Devil One hashtag Joe Sports Channel. Ladies and gentlemen, it is June 13, 2020, 10 31 p.m. Eastern Time, and I hope everybody is having a wonderful day today. It is a beautiful day outside of beautiful London, Ontario, Canada, and we have the one and only Chris Ricci. How you doing, brother? Uh, I'm doing okay. I mean, I can do better. At this time. Good to have you again. It's good to have you on, my friend. It's been a while. Well, it's been a few weeks since you last been on my show. And we're finally on the show, but it's a total different topic tonight. Yes. First off, I want to say to the family out there, rest in peace. Olivia Saracini, may God be with her. God bless her and take her to a better place. Chris, it's um, it's one of those shows tonight, not uh, ones I want. Ones that, that I just wish they could never be here, but we have to pay tribute and we have to respect each other. Uh, Chris, can you take me back to um, Olivia? Because you know, I know you know her. Well, she was um, a kind, vibrant, vibrant girl. Didn't deserve to go out like that, and oh. um, she was robbed of her life. So, apparently, you know, they they didn't catch the guy in the act. He he fled the scene after he hit her and her sisters. But um, her 19 year old sister survived. And um, sadly, Olivia, 17 years old, died. Also. And the uh, sister has watched her die while the perpetrator died. It's not fair. And I just wish she was still here. You know, it's sad when you see a 17 year old girl leave like this. She was not only 17. But she had only two weeks left, and she was going to graduate, go to prom. And I was watching a video a few weeks ago on Live Me on Chris Ricci's Love. And I saw something. I saw something with one of her friends. She couldn't believe it. She didn't know what to say. She was shocked by the news. Shocked by the driver, impairing driving. I don't care who you are. You stop and see what happened. But the guy just took off. He drove away. He drove away. He didn't care. He didn't care what happened to that girl. And she's no longer with us. And her friend has to suffer for the rest of her life. Not only her friend, Joe, it, it, it was her sister. Her 19-year-old sister was walking with her. And it's her sister that has to suffer the rest of her life. Her and her sister were like this. I know. I know them. And Olivia was like sister's shadow they were inseparable they did everything together and just like that they went for a walk one night just to go for a walk because they were bored and olivia never went home guys can you hear chris somebody's in, it's echoing you really can't hear him am i echoing Tell me what they say. I'm trying to get on to get on YouTube. I hear the echo, but I can hear you as well. You know, with a yeah. phone, is a, is a lot more difficult. You know, using a desktop or a laptop or 
even an iPad. No, the iPad would be the same thing. Can you guys hear him good? Well, we'll wait. Okay. Chris Reacher should be back. Much better now. There we go. Are we okay now? Yes. I hope we're okay. Continue what you were saying, brother. Yeah, so uh, Olivia was uh, her sister Julia's shadow. They did everything together inseparable and uh, she's just no longer with me. How long do you know her for? A while. About 10 years, I'd say roughly. About. I can't imagine what her mother and father are going through. Yes. <laughs> And knowing, we heard a couple of days ago, I don't even want to say it, but I showed you the video multiple times on Live Me. Yep. Multiple times. He's under arrest. He's home arrest. Yeah. And he can work. Mm -hmm. He can eat fresh food. And he just he just took a 17-year-old girl life away. How is that fair? How's that fair? You take somebody's life away and you can enjoy the you can enjoy your life. I don't care if you're home arrest or under arrest or whatever. You're still eating. You're still working. Fresh clothes. You're waking up every single day. You're seeing your friends. Yeah. How dare you do that? How dare people allow that? And I have to, I have to watch somebody for the rest of their life suffer like her friend, her sister. And this guy can go to jail for four or five years. He's not going to jail for 25 years, 30 years. There's no, uh, there's no uh, life in Canada. There's life in the States, you know. There's no death penalty here, but he's enjoying life. Oh, yeah, that girl, until she's gone. That's human. That is a human being. That's my sister. My sister looks exactly like her, you know. It's just a tough time. And I want to I share something with you guys. I have her website up here, and me and Chris were looking at it a few days ago, and it's something that just gives me the 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 figure, you know, gives me goosebumps, if you want to say. Yeah. Go ahead, show it. Rest in peace, Olivia. Can you guys see that all? Yeah. Chris, this photo, you said something about. Yeah. Okay. So Couple she was days. close to uh, to that site where that picture was taken, and um, if you can see the picture and you can tell what's above her head, it says "stop," and it's kind of ironic that it's above her head, and it's like you know, the signs were right there. She was going to get hit. This guy did not stop. It's just a crazy picture. It's like. It was kind of meant to be. She was supposed to go that way, and ah, I'm not gonna. I will never understand it. But it's like she was that picture. That was like a warning to everybody. Yeah, I'm gonna die there. Yeah, and knowing that a few months later she died there, you know, I don't know. If, you know, I'm not. A, I don't talk about religion, but believe me, there's a God out there. You know, there is a God out there, and Whatever God you believe in, um, there's a second life. And this girl's up there watching us right now perform on this show. And it's un unfortunately, it's very sad. And I really hope uh, her parents can overcome this. But I don't think any parent can overcome this after a hit and run. Maybe if we stopped and checked if she was okay. But knowing a hit and run and now he is at home eating fresh fruit, enjoying his life. Uh, he's going to go to court eventually. Uh, he's going to spend some time in jail, but that's it. Hey, Chris, is that oh, what guys. 
like I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna say one thing. Um, I live pretty close to the scene where she did die, and call me crazy, but um, ever since she died, every night I pray to God that he he basically I I don't want to wake up to the next day. I want to wake up to last Saturday. And at that time, be there to save Olivia. Call me crazy, but he'll do it. Because I think maybe he'll answer my prayers. Maybe out of some miracle, he'll answer my prayers. And I'll go there and I'll grab her and her sister. And I'll just say, listen, guys, call me crazy, but don't cross. Please don't cross. And I could have saved them. And I remember exactly what I was doing that night. I was up in Vaughn, Maple, Maple, Ontario. I was at my sister's house. And I left her house at 10.30 at night going home. I got home, it was about 11 o'clock, an hour before she was struck. She was literally a five-minute drive across the street before she was hit. And I just, I still can't, I can't, fan, like, I can't, I, I, it hasn't processed. It hasn't processed. And I wish, I'm not, I'm not God, I'm not, I'm none of that, I'm not Superman, but I Chris. really want to go back and save that girl. She did not, did not deserve to die like that. And if there's anybody in the chat right now that knows Olivia or knows the family and has been to the obituary across, like on Calvington Drive there, please let me know in the chat because I'm reading the chat right now. I want to know if there's anybody that knows her because I know Joe posted on her obituary site that we're going to be live talking about her tragic death. So I'm just wondering if anybody attended or if anybody knows about them. Well, I have some new viewers on here, so. Uh, yeah. You know, I've seen, just I've seen supporters that. or just, you know, mm -hmm. people coming out checking my show, but yeah, um, I have a new viewer in. Chris, this photo, you said something about this photo that kind of gave yeah. you uh, goosebumps. Can you yeah, explain that? Um, everybody right now, look at this photo that Joe has posted up top and pay attention to it. If you go to Olivia's um, page, it's called VSCO Visco, and she posts a lot of posts of herself, friends, and pictures of the sky. Okay, now, she loved taking pictures of the sky, okay, especially when the sky had nice colors to it. But in this particular photo, if you look, there's a stop sign. A stop sign and the sky. It's like she knew it was a sign, like telling her killer, please stop, because this is how I'm going to die if you don't. There's the stop sign. The signs were there. We just didn't really pay attention to it because, well, we didn't know. But there's a lot of photos of, she took a lot of pictures of the sky. Look at this one too. Yeah, it's that, that's very really cloudy. Awesome. The sun, it's like, you know, she was ready to go. She was meant to go. She was only here for 17 years and that's it. She wasn't going to live a full life. And unfortunately, but that is the truth if you look at it, you know. And we just, we have to kind of, you know, Believe in something, guys. Believe in something. We gotta come together. And knowing that a 17-year-old girl dies like this, you know, anything can happen on any given day. The other day, I was running. I almost got hit by a car. This lady in a Honda Civic was turning left on Commissioner's Road in Adelaide in London, Ontario, Canada. And she looked at me and she was still driving. I almost got hit because I had my headphones in and listening to Brock Lesnar's theme song 2018. And I was inches and inches away. Oh, I thought I was going to die. I got so scared. I took my headphones off and I started swearing. And I don't usually swear, but knowing that your life is on the line every day so from people that don't pay attention on the road. And people, the people who have their license, some of them, I don't get it how they get their license. I do not get it. Neither do I. Like, I just, her mother and father, like, what are they going through? Are they eventually going 
to be honest with you, Joe, when I asked you to to post this on like find social media, Facebook or obituary and post it, I was praying that maybe her mom or her father, uncle, aunt, everybody that it touches, her sister, even her sister, would be here watching, maybe commenting in the chat. But you know, that's a kind of long shot because of what they're going through. But it would be nice if they were here, they were listening. What I wanted, but as long as we do have a people and there are new people that are here, and I, I'm See not sure if anybody in the chat knows Olivia. Really good one. Her death, along with many others, break my heart every day. Rest in peace, young Olivia. Yeah. Yes. Jessica's a great supporter of mine, and uh, yeah, great, uh, great person. And you know, I just can't imagine when, when you know a person for over. A decade for 10 years and no one they're not here anymore it's just it's shocking it's like one day they're here and next day they're not here you know what i mean like i have so many friends that have gone and i still don't believe it that they're gone you know you gotta go now you gotta go and say hello to them beside the cemetery a grave like that no one they're not here because of a stupid mistake like this and you told me he had he had more, multiple impaired driving he had a lot of things you know, he had a lot of things, and uh, that video when he was running to the taxi. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, Joe, there's actually a new video. Uh, it's called the 4K guy. It's a three-minute video. It's this guy. He's actually shooting the scene where it happened. If you go and you just type in Olivia Saracini on YouTube. You pull up the video, you'll see it. It's a three minute long users, the 4K guy. If you want to play it for everybody, absolutely. The scene. How, how a series scene. What is it? 4K? Yeah, uh, 4K, the 4K guy. That's his uh, channel name, the 4K guy. And uh, he just posted it five days ago. And uh, it's three minutes and 10 seconds long, I believe. You know, it's amazing. I just put Olivia's name in, and my, our show came up, the second one. Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah, it's 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 a big thing here in Toronto, Joe. This is a very big thing. A lot. It, it cut this whole community right now. It's in shambles. It touched a lot of people's hearts. What happened? Okay, I found it, guys. Okay, now, guys, what happened that night? Want to put it full screen, Joe? Yeah. Perfect. You can hear the screams from the parents. With the video you can see, it's that's his sister right there. You can hear her crying. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. I can't. You just watched their sister die. Olivia's in that ambulance over there.
Oh my God, I can hear them screaming. Yeah, I know, it's very, it's very, they're working on her right now. You can see all the ambulance, the guys are looking to see if they can get her to breathe. And it just didn't work. Couldn't do it. She was hit way too hard. And you're not too far from the scenery. No, I'm I'm about five minutes away, Joe. I could, if I would have known, I could have been there in oh minutes. I could have saved her. I could have saved her, Joe. There you go. That is absolutely. The no. screams, the, the, the cries, her sister, that was the worst part when I watched the video for her sister. She knew her sister was gone, and she's moving to the next ambulance, knowing that her sister's and another and the other one dead. She can't do anything about it but cry. What is her sister going to gonna say to herself when, you know, Getting older, graduating, getting married, not knowing her sister's there. Oh. I just, I can't picture myself losing somebody and I was there. I just, I just couldn't. And if I, if I ever seen that, I don't know what I would do. I really don't know how to put it into words. I'm, I'm speechless because her mother and father had to watch that video knowing that. They went there to save their daughter. That is tough. Yeah, they got the call. They rushed to the scene to find out that her daughter, their daughter's in the ambulance, dead. 17 years old. So like my sister, like I said, I'm going to put myself. And we just got to try to stay positive. 2020 has gone. It's been a rough year, but... Um, there's there's been good, been a lot of good things too, you know. And knowing that Chris Ricci uh, knew this girl for ten years, you know, and it's amazing to have you on and you know discuss the things that you knew about her. Now, when you first heard this news, Chris, did you believe it at first? Because I wouldn't. I said, was it something that was kind of like, yeah, okay, you just brushed it off, or did you actually just kind of? I yeah, I, uh, I didn't believe it, but I did. It, it was a mixture, you know. My head was all over the place. I knew it happened, but I didn't want to believe it happened. Does that make sense? You got something to share, guys, as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah, guys, if you want to uh, visit this. Uh, you can leave comments. You can donate. It's all up to you. It's um, it's beautiful. Uh, they even got uh, actually. You can actually, let's go back to tribute, guys. If you guys want to go here, uh, you can put your name, your email, message, um, this, and then post your condolence. And over here, uh, if you want to plant a tree, uh, it's thirty nine ninety five. You know, given to the families. Uh, it's not much, you know, 17 year old girl has to go like this. It's very unfortunate. And we just, um, we just got to really um, think how you know, the world can, can go from being up here to the bottom, you know? And I just, I just can't imagine. It's. Um... And I want to tell uh, all the viewers what I told you uh, before the show. Uh, so there's a twist to this horrific tale um apparently there's an investigation that it may have not been sean ramsey the 46 year old that was charged in this um hit and run but could have been his son his teenage son that was 
in the driver's side when Sean was in the passenger and his son hit Olivia. And Sean, the, the father, took the rap for his son. So now there's an investigation into that because Sean Ramsey had a suspended license. He shouldn't have been on the road. He was charged in March for impaired driving. So he could have been behind the wheel. We don't know right now. He could have been drunk. His son could have been driving. But that's factors right now that are up in the air. But you know what's crazy about all this is if he ends up, if they end up charging the son, the son is going to get a slap on the wrist. He's going to have money problems because his insurance is going to go up. But that's it. I don't care for some He just took a 17 year old girl's life away. Yeah, yeah. The rules here in Toronto, yeah, the justice system is not good. If if they charge Sean, the father, the 46 year old, that man's going to jail for life. But as of right now, he got off on a $12,500 bail. He has house arrest. He can't be in the in an in the front seat of a motor vehicle, he can he can he can take a TTC, go train, whatever, to work and back, and that's it until he goes to court. That is that is not that is not justice. Does, does that sorry. make sense? Does that make sense? I'm sorry, but that is not justice. That man should be in jail until his trial date. Not he can be at home eating regular food, sitting on his porch, enjoying the hot summer weather. Come on. In the great in, in one of the greatest countries in the world, the United States of America, if that ever happened, and it probably has happened, you go to jail for a long time and you stay in jail. You know, there's no house arrest, especially for this kind of scene. You, you, you lost not only you killed a 17-year-old girl. But you could have killed her sister, nineteen-year-old girl, as well. And this is okay. We accept this. There's a video I want to show. Actually, another one. I got uh, somebody. Uh, where is this? Let me do stop sharing and then share screen. Let's go here. This one. Let's go back here. Go ahead. Yeah. This is very uh, disturbing. Okay. Disturbing. This uh, ever growing shrine here beside you. You just, you just came here, you're sort of talking to us, you want to get stuff off your chest, and you just blessed yourself. I blessed her, but I blessed myself because I don't want to go up and never face that enough pain like that. But one thing I can say is that this will forever be like this. And uh, for, I, I hope to wow the individual who doesn't fess up to it has the same pain in his life that he's created for everybody around him. Let me stop for a sec. Let me stop yeah. for a sec. That license plate, they can't make that clear because they couldn't find the license plate at first, Chris. Remember? Yeah, I know. They couldn't. It, Sean turned himself into police with a lawyer. Police didn't catch him. He turned himself in. I can Photoshop. I can Photoshop any photo I want. It can be so blurry you can't see. You can't Photoshop that. And we have the best detectives and the best investigators out there. Absolutely the ridiculous. Families, the poor girl who had her whole life ahead of her in the community that we're standing behind saying you That is so sad. You know what? I, I would appreciate it if you played another video. Absolutely. There is 
there's only one video of her and her friend. They did a video on YouTube together. Yeah, she showed me that right on uh, on live me. We were watching it together. The video of her and her friend. Yes, remember you're showing it on your screen, your double screen on live me a couple days ago. I think that's a video. It? Was it that one? I think so. Okay, yeah. So all you got to do is type in Olivia Saracini on YouTube, and you're gonna see it's 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 her and her. You just share your screen. I'll show you which one it is. I think it's, it's I think it's gonna be the first one. Yeah. Go go said man Keo block we gotta do better. Ghost, you're right, man. You're so right, bro. Which one? The second one? Better. It is the second one, yeah. So, guys, this is Olivia on the left and her friend on the right. Hey, guys, so hope you enjoyed this video. Only... Sorry, after Olivia left, she has a mess. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Practice with this. Oh, I know. I did it. Oh, my God. Don't sound like you're all <laughs> Hey everyone! Shut up! <laughs> everyone, it's Julia and Olivia. I, mean, I just wanted to say thank you guys so so much for all the support. Like I have over fifty subscribers now. Yay! I I did not expect. <laughs> well, I guess having a guest surprise isn't really a surprise anymore. But thank you guys so so much for all the support I'm getting. It's like unreal. I did not expect to get more than 50 subscribers in less than a week. It's just like mind blown. For this week's video, I have a special little guest who happens to be very loud. Get up. Oh, now, now, now. Olivia! I didn't know. Are you proud of me? I'm so proud of you. So, for this week's video, we're going to be doing the Whisper Challenge. And why are you so enthusiastic? The Whisper Challenge! If for any of you who don't know what the whisper, know what the whisper challenge is, it's basically one person has headphones in, it's like blasting music, so you can't hear the other person to say a line, and you have to guess what the Can you hear it, Chris? Like, yes, I hear it. Boy, that's it. Uh, okay, so let's get on to the video. Oh, oh my god, you're so bad. Like you're going to get water. You're leaving me here? Yeah. Who's going first? <laughs> Can you hear me? What? Can you hear me? Well, now I can. Okay, before, could you? No. She was so full of energy, Angel. Just, just full of energy. Very nice girl. Probably not the word, but that's okay. Okay, ready? She reminds me of my sister. Right? And now, big water soul. What? My ice cream cone! Talking the downstairs! <laughs> I didn't get the rent! No, 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 Unicorns. The cone! Unicorns. Unicorns! Yes! <laughs> Took over. Took over? Downtown. Downstairs! Downtown. You're like downtown? Down, down! Downtown. Downtown! And now. Uh, and sang a song! And now. Now. They. They. What? What? Your. Your. My. Your. Your. Soul. Dick. Soul. Door. Soul. Gold. Soul. What's called the soul? Soul. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So, soul, right? What? What were you saying? Soul? Soul? I said, I thought you were saying soul. Soul. Oh, it's a soul. Oh, it's soul. Okay. You can pause it, Joe. It's, okay. Yeah, that's, that's good. Okay. Enough. Yeah, we're, that's just, you know, a video that was left behind the last video of her song. Hi, Dad. <laughs> How's it going? I'm good. I'm doing good. Welcome to Joe Sports Channel. Okay. How are you? Chris, one Meister, one Meister, Chris. How are you, man? Good, just, how are you, man? We're just talking about this amazing girl. How how her life was taken away from just one stupid person. You know, just a hit and run. You know, it's one of those deals, unfortunately, and um, we have to suffer, and we have to uh, now just look back. You know, at the past, not look at the future. But I know she's up there right now watching uh, with God, and uh, she's in a better place, you know. 
Chris, um, what do you have to say to the family? If, if you know, this video, I'm going to try my best to, to get it out to the family, and I hope I do, and I hope I can find a way. If you had like two minutes for the mother and father, what would you say to them? Well, I'll say this ever since uh, she passed away. Every single day, I drive to her site, and I say a little prayer, and then I continue doing what I have to do for the rest of the day. But I've already done that for seven days straight, because today is the day that she died, which was last week at 12.15. So her anniversary will be in about an hour. An hour will make a week. So uh, I would like to say to the family, just... Don't give up on yourselves. Don't, don't, don't let this get to you too much where you start to go crazy about it. Like just keep. If you have God, everything will be fine. Just know that she's with you, and just be strong. And family and friends are going to be there with them too. And we're all here. The, the whole community is behind that family right now the whole community and if you lived in this area you would understand what i'm what i'm saying but um like i said i i want the family to know that i've tried my best to pray to god to try and i'm crazy you can call me crazy if you want but i want to go back to that day i don't want to wake up to tomorrow i want to wake up to last saturday with the thought in my mind that this girl is going to get killed at 12 15. let me be in that intersection to grab them and push them out of harm's way please god let me do that but my prayers haven't been answered and they probably never will but i'll keep trying <laughs> as long as you have faith and as long as you try that's the best you can man because god is watching all of us you know god can take us uh, anyhow, on any given day, my message to the mother and father I'm, I'm sorry, my condolences. Like, I just can't and, uh, God be with her and God be with you. Guys. Never let yourself down. Don't ever uh, feel like you know you should have been there or you were the one, it was your fault. Absolutely not. It was just one of those days you're going out of. At midnight with your friend, teenagers, they want to go have a slushy, go to Tim Hortons, McDonald's. You know, girls love chicken nuggets for some reason. They love chicken nuggets. They probably want those chicken nuggets. And next thing you know, those chicken nuggets uh, went there, she was on the ground, and she's now no longer with us. So let's just um, overcome this and we'll come together somehow. It's pretty raw. I hope we really do, Joe. Yeah, I hope justice is going to be served for Olivia because right now justice has failed. The police have failed Olivia and her family. This man is out. He's out, Joe, with a $12,000 measly little bail. And not only did he just hit her, but he fled and killed her. And he's out. I mean, you know what I'm saying? How does that make any sense to anybody. I mean, I want to ask my dad. My dad, Mo Meister, what do you think of it? It's, it's sad. It's You see too many of this happen, and the end result is, like uh, Chris said, uh, it's, it's it's the justice system's corrupt, and it's not it doesn't work. Eye for an eye. But, you know, we don't have that here. And unfortunately, it, it always works out for the, you know, the accused uh, will get off or, you know, you know, hit and run. That's terrible. He knew he did something wrong and didn't stop. And But for him to flee, that's it. That should tell you that, you know, he's running. But, you know, um, it, it's, it's true that time heals everything, but it's going to take a long time for them, you know, to get over, you know, this uh, hardship. Especially this, especially a hit and run. Like I said before to Chris, before you joined uh, YouTube on my stream, uh, if he stopped and checked if she was okay, awesome. it would be, better, it would be in a lot better position. But we're not, you know, the hit and run. 
And he had a Tagmanga's lawyer involved in it too. He's got a lawyer involved. I don't care who you are. You, you, you did wrong and you should know you did not. I don't know if he was drinking or what, but still, what he did is absolutely wrong. And that's disrespect, not only to the family, but to Olivia as well. Joe, the man wasn't even supposed to be on the road that night. He had a suspended license for prior drinking and driving charges back in March, two months before this happened. He had his license suspended. Man was driving, shouldn't have been on the road. It was a crosswalk. It was a green light. They went. The car was basically in front of another car, but he wasn't in the lane to turn left. He was in the lane to go straight. But when the light changed, he went suddenly into the left lane and made that left right away when Olivia and her sister were almost to the next sidewalk. He just didn't make it. Well, wow. that's how it happened. And I'm really speechless. Julia, her sister, got it in the lane. Olivia was thrown 10 feet. Olivia only weighs 100 pounds. And where this car hit her was right over here where it, it basically, she got suffocated. So when she hit the ground, she got head trauma. And when Julia came to, she crawled by her sister's side to watch her sister gasp for air. Well, that's... And she just died. And she was screaming and passed by. She just ran to the scene calling 911. She just watched her own sister die in an instant. I'm going to make a trip up to Toronto. I'm going to go where and she and I'm going to give my prayers. I'm there. I'm going to get down there sometime. I'll make my prayers. Yeah, we'll go. Oh, cool. yeah, it's right about I want to have, I want to pay respect to the family and especially to Olivia. I don't know this girl, but again, the third great time on my show, she's like my sister. Okay? And I want to go there and I want to pay tribute to the street. I'm not that. Just, you know, just... For everybody that's in the chat, whoever is in the Toronto area, this happened on Keel and Calvington, main yeah. intersection, Keel and 401. If anybody wants to go and pay tribute, you'll see a big memorial site with a big sign saying justice for Olivia with a bunch of flowers right by the scene. And that'll be there for a long time. So, so. should be there forever. Should be there forever. Yeah. So, I don't, have, I don't have much to say. Like, it's just, it's so hard. We got so many good comments, you know. Yeah, but, we got a lot. Yeah. But this one, absolutely right, Anna. Absolutely right. You know, it's sad. And then we got another one. We were seeing a ghost, you know. And we got, like, just, you know, I felt the whole thing. Uh, whoever's out there, whoever, whoever lost the loved ones, I have a special message for you guys. Believe in God, have to pray every day. Always believe in yourself. Do what's right for you. Do what's right for God and then do it for yourself. And always feel loved inside. I don't care what kind of friends you have, what kind of family you have. Always love yourself before you love anyone else because if you love other people before you love yourself, believe me, they're going to have a very frustrating life and they're going to be very depressed for a very long time. I love myself. I love my family. I love I love God first. And then I love myself and I love my family because my mother and father taught me right from home. And I will always be like that. I will always help people. Out. But you got to love yourself before you help other people. That's how it works. It does. And another thing that um, is going to be with Julia, the sister, for a very long time was it was her choice. She asked Olivia to go for a walk that night. So let's just go for a little walk. So she's gonna be blaming herself. I would, I, I, I would, but you know it's not her fault. If it didn't happen that night, what happened the next day? So it's their time. It's just gonna happen. I believe in that. You having a party over there, Chris? I can hear a lot of noise. Pardon? You having a party over there? I can hear some noise. Oh no, that's not my. I, I, no, nothing no, here. Is, so. is it Momeister? Not me, no. Maybe it's it. Maybe it's upstairs in your house. I don't think so. <laughs> There's nobody here. Right, you know what, Joe? I hear that too. I hear that. No, it's not my house. <laughs> what are you hearing? I'm hearing like TV and kids yelling and screaming. 
Yeah, I hear that too. Oh no, that's upstairs in my that's upstairs in my family room. Oh, that's uh, you. Okay, okay. I'm saying, am I losing? Am I losing? It's all numb. I have all timers yeah. are what? What's happening? You know. That sensitive uh, microphones you got. It is, especially uh, StreamYards is very sensitive, and especially this mic right here. Not on my birthday, too. Really good mic. Uh, Chris, I want. I really want to thank you for coming on tonight. Um, do you have anything else to say before you go, brother? Just try to reach out to the family, Jill. Let them know about the stream. Because right now, I'm I'm leaving. I'm not going to the, to the house for, for a while. I'm going to let them. I don't want to be a bother. I go to the site. I pay my respects. I've seen a couple of people there, that a couple of family members, but I don't want to go to the house and intrude. So if you ever come across them off of social media, let them know about this uh, about this broadcast and have them watch it. Maybe it'll it'll help a little bit. But it's easy, and may God walk beside your sister and family to give you strength. Thank you, Alexis. You know, uh, what's really good, Chris, what I thought about after just right now before you pop off and do, do uh, what's really good what you should do is make a letter and go send it in the mailbox. That's a good idea. Put my condolence on it, right? Like a little letter. To the whole yeah. family, from the mother, yeah. father, to the cousin, everybody, like a big letter and put it in the mailbox. I think they'd really appreciate that. I think that's what I'm going to do either. I'll try to mail yeah. it and you can mail it to them. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, that's a good idea. You know, that's the least I can do. You know, I wish if, if I had the power to bring it back, I would, but I'm not God. You know what I mean? That's the least I can do. That would mean a lot for myself. I'd feel really good, and I think it would be good for the family. You know, we can, you know. Yeah. You know, it would have been nice if we could have contacted Julia. She's at home recovering right now, but the last thing she wants to do is talk about what happened. But to have her on the show talk about what you know, but at the same time, you don't want to really intrude and get her involved because she, she's the one who really knows everything that, that happened piece by piece. But I guess I'll figure that out when I talk to her whenever the time is right. I appreciate it. I really appreciate you coming on tonight. and. Sharing your story with Olivia, yeah. you know her. You know, and uh, we hope you're on the show more often. I love you coming on every time. You make me smile. Today, you made me smile. You know, a few weeks ago, you know, and I, I want to thank you. I want to thank um, what, what's your name again? Mo. Mo, I want to thank you, Mo, for coming in and showing your respect. And I know you don't know Olivia, but you're here, you're paying attention. You're God bless you, brother. And, uh, God, and bless God bless the story, yeah. Rest in peace. Chat. Yes, and God bless the whole chat that's been involved and all the new faces, all, all the new usernames that we've seen. And hopefully somebody got the message from the obituary where me and you... I, I believe so because I have a lot of new people. I, I really that's think... That's good. That's awesome. That's awesome. So that worked. And hopefully we made a couple people smile tonight is what we said. Thank you, man. Thank you very much. Have a great night, and I'll talk to you very soon. All right, I'll go on live, me, Joel. So after your stream, come to me. And... I'll hop on you for sure. Absolutely. You know, I'll help you out. Right, connect, connect. That's all it is. Connection. Right. Have a good show. You too. Well, wow. Well, uh, dad and son again. Well, that was really hard to show. I can't imagine. I really can't imagine. That's too bad. There's too many of that going on. You know, your father, you got three beautiful daughters, three beautiful sisters, myself. Uh, having a boy on the way. Um, it's your personal, you know, your father. How, how could you sleep? How could you think? How could you go to work? You know, knowing that your daughter just died. You know what I mean? I just you can't. It's... it's, it's uh... Detrimental. It's it's uh, you can't you can't function anymore. You're not sane anymore after that kind of thing happens. One thing is if if, if passing naturally, but it's it's you know someone did that. But you know, justice system doesn't work. Twelve thousand dollars to 
bail and you know suspended license that's unbelievable it's too bad in the united states it wouldn't be like that united states is a different story regardless you know time heals time heals but it's going to take a long time for them to heal so you know they the, the, i guess they say what they said the twelve thousand dollar um he paid you know to get out of jail and be house arrest uh, i guess money is more than a human being i asked somebody the other day let me ask you this question too dad there's five million dollars on the ground five million dollars us in a beautiful vehicle and there's a little boy there uh, he has five minutes left you can save him would you take that five million dollars and leave or leave and that boy dying or would you take that boy and save him which one would you pick of course you'd save the child of course it sounds like the money is more important than this you know, young girl who died. That's what really it's all about. Money. Money, money, money. Money is not going to take you. Money is the root of all evil. You know, it's money. Is, money is here for this world. We don't take the money when we die. You know, I have friends and cousins that died. of the, they didn't take money with them. You know, no. a multi-millionaire. A billion, I don't care what you, you're not taking that money with you. You know, no. money, money is just here to, you know, keep us happy, keep us, you know, dressed. But believe me, what comes first before money? That's why I look at it. Of course. Money is the root of all evil. It creates so much evil in this world. But, you know, people think uh, the more money you have, the happier you are. It's not true. You know, all these billionaires and billionaires, they're not happy. No. And why you do you think they're not happy? Because you think they stepped over a lot of people over the years? It depends. It depends, you know, how the person is. There's a lot of people that have money that do a lot of good. And there's a lot of people that have money and just, you know, worship it. You know, the more money they make, the more you spend. The less money you make, the more wise you are. You use that money wisely. So. Less. I. I like money. Okay, but I don't take money over a soul. Absolutely not. What this, what 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 Toronto really is saying is here. Take the money. Yeah, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just it. Here you go. You know? it's, it's just the amount they set for bail till he gets a court date and they figure out. You know, he, what he's guilty of man, whatever. It's probably manslaughter. What did he you know, say? And run. Hit and run is obviously, you know, can be manslaughter. But, you know, uh, obviously it wasn't planned. So, you know that. But manslaughter is manslaughter, right? Regardless, he just, it's unbelievable. It's too bad. I, I'm really speechless for tonight. I'm really speechless. It's, it's so sad to, to see. It's heartbreaking. It's, it's, you can't function anymore. No. Hey, Jeff, how are you? I'm good. How about you? I'm doing okay. Doing better. I'm all right. Okay. Uh, I think you're echoing a little bit, just or. No. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's that's probably TJ's phone. Uh, <laughs> we have to say, just about this tragic, this guy in uh, bail. Just from. You know, the first time I read about her story and what happened and everything that I've learned today on this stream, it brings it a lot home for me. And it makes me angry that this man is at home and comfortable right now. And I just, it, she was too young and it wasn't okay. And something needs to change. And as much like I heard you say, oh, it wouldn't be like this in the U.S. It is. Um, almost four years ago, I had a friend who uh, died in a car accident. That other driver got to walk free. And I know um, another, well, she's a woman now, but she was five when she was hit by a car. And she lost use of her legs and the majority of movement in her arms. 
And again, that driver, it was a hit and run, but there was no cameras. And for her, there wasn't any justice. Jesus, I thought the United States would be a little bit better with that, I guess. No, no, how can no. you say that? Uh, United States, you can't compare. Their justice yeah. system is, is a failure. Absolutely. So this utterly breaks my heart. Because oh. it's not okay. It's everywhere. So it's everywhere where it's happening. Yeah. The, like, the, the cameras and videos, this, this technology these days are new, but Imagine back then, people hitting running people, running people all over the streets, you know what I mean? Like, you look at people dying every day, you know, you know, people getting shot and everything, you know? Back then, there was no cameras, they hit and run, nothing, it was just normal. But today, we have the cameras, and we should be a little bit more smarter, because we got the, one of the, the best investigators in, you know, Canada and the United States of America. You know, North America has the best, um, all, all the best technology, social media, everything out there. And we're the ones that just kind of sit back and say, yeah, he's okay. Let him let him get off. It's just a life. He's okay. Let him get off, you know? That's it's really is. And it's pathetic. I'm sorry. It is downright pathetic. Actually, uh, we were talking about this earlier today uh, with just you know, all the riots and all the protests that are going on here. And I'm like, it's pathetic. We are in 2020. I don't want to hear any excuse about how your parents were raised or how you might have been raised we have enough information enough outlets to actually learn to be different if it actually comes down to that kind of issue we have enough that we can open up our eyes and open up our hearts and know that this is not the way to be trained people under any circumstance it's not every life matters it's literally that's a baseline i'm sorry every life is cherished every life is loved and that's how everyone should be treated that's right. That's right. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know what yeah. to say. I, I really don't know what to say. About you can't say much. What can you say? Yeah. You know? But why do we act like that? Why is the system like that? Why is it corrupted? We have so many smart people in the world. You know, we got the smartest doctors in, in both beautiful countries, Canada and United States. Why can't we just sit down and have a meeting and say, hey, enough is enough. Let's you know, do something. Change the system around. But no, you know how it is. Today, it sounds like it back in the good old 50s and 60s, you know? Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. I, honestly, I think a lot of it. Yeah. Of course. I mean, it's absolutely right. See so what 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 I said about the United States is what I thought it was better because they get the death penalty because we don't get the death penalty. But what you're saying is, you're saying is, they can get that twelve thousand dollars and leave. And thank you for telling no, me. no, that's just the bill. That's just the bill. It's not twelve thousand and leave. It's just a bill. You know, they're thinking, is he a flight risk? Well, you're not going anywhere with flight, flight, but I'm just saying to get him out, the judge, whoever, you know, uh, agreed on this, the judge obviously, you know, agreed and said, oh, $12,000. I don't know how they came up with that number, but, you know, he's on house arrest. Is he better off in jail until, until his trial, or is he better off, you know, he's thinking, I don't know how they came up with the number, but he should be locked up until, you know, his trial. And now they're investigating if it was a son or if it was son or father. So we have another, that's another story to talk about, you know? So just piles on and pile, like, poor mother and father, they must be, that's so disrespectful. That's so ignorant of them. Like, I always say to, to people out there, you know, and, and I'm not trying to be rude, but I always say, what if that was your child? What would you do? And you're making you're making that order. You're making that order to them. What would you do? Not from them to tell them you're standing there. What would you do? And they have nothing to say. But they'll say something when other, you know, families lost their children, their loved ones. Kind of makes me, you know, um, kind of makes me think a little bit what, what kind of world we're in. Yeah. Well, Junior, looking fresh, buddy. What's going on, fellas? What's going on, Jess? Hey, okay. lot time to see. Nice tie. Appreciate it. Thank you. 
Yeah, this, wow. Yeah, and here's the thing. And like I was just telling Jess before, you know, not even not even 10 years ago in Columbus, Georgia, I was stationed over in Columbus, Georgia, and not even 10 years ago, I'm on my way home from the hospital. Had, you know, had, had a little bit of a sickness, was feeling sick, and I'm at this little turn where there's another lane that could come in from another street. And all of a sudden you just see this SUV coming in and the SUV is basically coming out and swerving all over the place. And it, it's just doing craziness. And it ended up being that the guy was a drunk driver and he was evading arrest from the police. He ended up pinging off my car, pinging off the SUV the, that was next to me, basically going like a ping pong ball back and forth. And his wheel ended up getting caught in the wheel well of the SUV and landed on the top on the right side of my car. You know, wow. I, I, if I had my if I had my kid with me at the time, thankfully I didn't. I told him for some reason I just said, you know what, don't worry, stay home, and, and I'll be back in a little bit. But if I would have had my family with me at the time, they they would anybody who was on the right side would have been dead. They they would have been dead. Because the way that he landed on top of my vehicle and everything like that, and then so even at that matter, he his car flipped on its side. We tried to help him out, and he was still being self, senseless, uh, selfless, and you know trying to help a person out. And even at that, as soon as he got out the car, he bolted, he ran. You know, and, and this is what people who have disregard for others' lives are. You know, this is what they do. And it's ridiculous. I mean, it's all good to have a drink. It's all good to have have fun. But if you know you are too inebriated to get behind the wheel of a vehicle, hand your keys off or stay where you are. Call a cab. I don't care. And unfortunately, people don't think of that decision because all they care about is themselves at that moment. I want to play a video of Sean Ramsey running to a taxi. And I want to see three of you guys react to what you have to see because – this is very disturbing. I, I just can't believe it. And, and I want to thank Chris. Richie, thank you. I just found the video right now. I'll send it to my dad's room, too. I wanted just everybody to take a listen a few minutes and see this. Calling all Sun Tune haters. You're going to love this. New Coppertone Sport Clear. Not thick, not messy. Goes on clear, plus it's Strong. Sport Canada's number one selling sports Look at this. Good evening. Seventeen year old Olivia Thurston. Oh, the camera. It's fine. Is more and the man is also facing charges in connection with another incident. Um, are they allowed to see me? That's right, Zerada. And the other charges date back only two and a half months. In fact, the troll man is facing several counts in relation to that incident, including impaired operation and impaired overheating. 46 year old John Ramsey runs from the 32 Division Police Station to a waiting taxi. <laughs> Granted bail after a video hearing with the Justice of the Peace, despite facing five charges in connection with the hit and run death of a 17 year old girl. Police, despite the fact sources tell CTV News Ramsey was driving under suspension at the time of the fatal accident and was already facing impaired driving charges dating back to March 24, less than three months ago. Indescribably angry. This is a girl talking about. Like, I wish that I had the words to say, but I, I don't yet. Not yet. Around 12, 15 a.m. Sunday, 17-year-old Olivia Saracini and her 19-year-old sister Julia were both struck as they made their way across Cavington Drive on Hill Street. Police say the sisters were walking in a crosswalk on a green light when they were hit by a dark-colored vehicle. The driver did not remain. I have pictures of final moments like that. 
um, the fact that somebody hit her so hard that she didn't have a chance, and we graduated in less than two weeks. We were so close. We were so close, so she's never gonna get that. It's terrible, she's too young. She was too young. And now she's gone. I know about this, sir. John Ramsey contacted police through his lawyer yesterday. The drawn man was arrested at 4.45 p.m. and charged with bail to stop at scene of accident causing bodily harm. Bail to stop at scene of accident causing death. Careless driving causing bodily harm. Careless driving causing death. And drive while under suspension. Ramsey was released on $12,500 bail. He must reside with a surety and he is under house arrest. Although he is allowed to travel to work via go transit. He's not allowed to sit in the front seat of a vehicle, nor is he allowed to operate a motor vehicle. And he is also allowed to visit his own teenage son as long as he is accompanied by his jury. Reporting live, we're going to slow him down back to Zoraida. Is that right? Is that right, Noel? Is that right, Jess? Is that right, Moist? Like, I'm speechless. Man, especially he had to, you know, contact his lawyer. What gets me is, was that him leaving the court or was that him leaving the uh, precinct? That's I didn't get to hear that part. That's him taking off. That's him taking off. That's what I heard from Chris, him taking off, running. From the police police precinct or from the court? From I think the was it the police station, Chris? I think it was from the police station. That's yeah, I think it's court. from court. It was from court. Yeah, and he's dressed in a uh, he's dressed in slacks, not even slacks, a pair of jeans and a sweater. Yep, yeah. that's straight up disrespectful. It doesn't matter, man. They didn't. He doesn't care. Ah, wow. I can't with that. No, Go said that's 32 Edivision. Oh, so it was the precinct. Yeah, that was the, it was the it was the precinct. So, I mean, that was my that was my wondering. Either way, it's still wow. And that shows how much the police actually cared for him because of the fact of Anything else in a case like that, especially here, if you do something like that and you start becoming high news profile because of this case, because of it, you did kill somebody, they're making sure that you walk out of there with some type of protection. They let that man run up on his own. Yeah. I can't. Oh, your uh, pictures, Noel, you sent me. Yeah. That's, that, that's what the car looked like after about a week. God, uh, God bless everyone out there who, who has to deal with the situation. You know, uh, a cousin of mine, her daughter, her daughter died from um, you know motorcycle crash in Lebanon, and it was a crash. It was a hit and run. Same thing. They just got engaged. The wedding was next day. He was taken on a cruise in the motorcycle, nice Kawasaki motorcycle, and. You know he's going. He's he, you know he's going a little bit over speed. He's about going 85 miles, 90 miles. You know, in Lebanon, there's not really rules for what, what to drive. You can drive, you drive, right? And they were turning on this corner. It was in Canada. That was it was turning on this corner, and they hit. They pull off this balcony and cut them into pieces, like slice them. You know, and they're working his next day. And what what the guy did? Oh, he he got off. He's married now. He has kids. He's blessed. He has a family. But knowing that the mother has to suffer every day, every day, she's sleeping at the cemetery every day. You know, a mother and son have a special bond. Okay, a special bond that you cannot um, take that away. But knowing that that guy has a family, has kids, and a wife, knowing he killed somebody, that's pretty sad, man. Pretty sad. Yeah, too bad. It's. Uh, speechless. You can't. What what can you do? In due time, I, time heals everything, but it's still there for the rest of your life. 
Yeah. You see what you see what Chris is saying? Uh apparently there's an investigation on his son yeah. being the driver. Oh no, that, who knows so. Yeah, like, but even at that, even at that, okay, so now what's gonna end up happening? Even if that no, because now they can get them for uh, put, uh basically putting a fraud report in. That's right. You know, you, you just you just had somebody else lie. I mean, that's not good. Like you you think you're sitting there and you're protecting your son, but you're not. You know, what it would have protected your son is you let him take responsibility, you let him learn the responsibility of his actions. You're not letting him learn the responsibility of his actions by sitting there and going and, and taking a rap for him. Absolutely. And now, what, what is he supposed to learn about it? My dad lied for me and now he's in jail? Because what that, that's considered what? He, he called manslaughter because they wouldn't run? Is it a manslaughter, Dad? Would it be that? It would be like what? Vehicle manslaughter in like the second or third degree? Because it was it was it, 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 it's yeah, not on it's purpose. Manslaughter. It's manslaughter for sure, of course. You know. So I mean, what what is that for? For, I know in the U.S. I don't know about Canada, but I know in the U.S. That, that's like a ten to fifteen year. Ten, sentence. yeah, ten to, 10 to fifteen year. So now you're gonna have your father go sit in a jail for fifteen years. Let's say fifteen years. Worst case scenario, fifteen years. For something you did. And as a father, you're thinking, oh, I'm protecting my, my child. I'm not letting them go into jail. But you're not. What you're doing is you're creating that child to have basically a whole issue now. Because yeah. let's 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 say let's say you think, okay, I'm doing the best thing for my son, and that's that's what it is. And yes, as a father, you try to do anything you can for your children, you do anything to protect your children. But in this particular case, no. You just subjected your son to ridicule from the rest of the family because the family is going to find out that it was the son. You just you just subjected your your son to now having to lie, possibly on a stand. That's so crazy. yeah, you would have had you would have had if if they stopped and realized you know that could have reduced God knows how how much, but you still. It's still you. You hit the person. You know you did something wrong, and you took off. That thing, that you know, that issue of you taking off, you knew, and you just ran. So that's a major issue there. Exactly. Yeah. So. And that's what I'm saying. Like this, this it doesn't make any sense. If and, and if that's the case, and he really did is taking the rap for his son, then he needs to reevaluate what he's doing for his kid, because now. You're gonna get even in more trouble for falsely reporting something to the police, where you could have gotten into less of an issue if it would have been, "Hey, my son was driving. I have a suspended license. My son was driving. This is what's going on. Whole nine yards." But you yeah. want to think that you're protecting your child, and you're not. You're ridicule. You're gonna end up having your child being ridiculed by so many people who know what actually happened, rather than it being publicized. Mm -hmm. This is really sweet, Olivia. She actually put this. People go, but how they left always stays. It's absolutely true. And she has a lot of great quotes like on her website. And um, I, just, I see a lot of them like, were pitched before when the show started, me and Chris were talking before you guys hopped on. I don't know if you guys remember what we were saying. But a lot of her quotes were towards, um, like she was, the, it was always pictures of the sky and you know, amazing quotes and quotes to God and all that. And this is really, really nice. Like, I'll read it again. Uh, people go, but how they left always stay. And that's absolutely 110% right. Oh, you know, yeah. That's, I agree with that. Yes, you probably agree with that. Noel, Gina, Mo, Meister, Dad. I agree with that, absolutely, you know? Oh, yeah. So I'm just Yes, for sure. That. For sure. You know? Anyways, guys, I got to I gotta go to bed. I work in the morning, overtime tomorrow. So um just want to say um, my condolences to the family and uh, – May God rest your soul. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. I'll talk to you soon. Right. Good night, my master. All right. Have a good night. Yeah, take care. Thanks, Dad. How are you guys doing? Good? Yeah. Yeah. One's looking really uh, spicy down there with a nice suit. The other one, I, 
drinking my favorite beer if it's right. Miller Lite? Uh, no, she's no, drinking actually, a malt liquor. I, I have a Smirnoff ice. Okay, I thought it was Miller Lite for a sec. Nah, I'm going fruity tonight. Do we have any of those left, out of, by the way? Or did you kill them all? Can I get one, please? Or I can't really. All right, one moment. Yeah. I'm sitting here drinking pink lemonade, and she's getting the Miller Lite. I mean, Look, well, it's not the Smirnoff I'm ice. I'm drinking my bucket of my nice water. There's a hole in it. Not a fruity one. Give me the oh. ice. Okay. The ice. Actually, I'll take the ice and the apple. No problem, Chris. Anytime. Anytime. Thank you. You know what? This is the, this is the least I can do for the family. And tonight is not just one of those regular shows. Today is a very special show. And it's a special moment for the people out there that know Olivia and the friends and the loved ones. And I want truly have my condolence to them and the family, you know. This is not uh, one of those shows we we talk about, you know, all sports and all that. No, this is this is something serious we're gonna we're gonna take into, you know. There's there's too much serious that's going on in this world right now that's not being discussed. And uh, you know, I, I just I can't, you know, with everything, you know, with this, with this unfortunate accident, you know, where this this young woman she lost her life at what seventeen. And she barely started living. You know, she barely she barely started living. She was getting ready to graduate, as far as I, I I understand. She barely got to live the way she wanted to. And what it looks like is that she was living, but she didn't get to live as an adult. She didn't get to do the things that maybe she wanted to do. Who knows? Maybe she wanted to be a parent. She didn't get she's not gonna get to do all that stuff. And for somebody to just either lie or even just drive away period that that's just heartbreaking and i'm sorry but i hope they persecute that person under the fullest of the law that they can two weeks from graduation jesus and that's the thing that gets me not okay that's the thing that gets me if you notice something and i want you to really and anybody who's watching right now i want you to notice something Anytime you hear these hit and runs or these accidents, car accidents that happen where somebody who was innocent, sweet, even if they weren't innocent and sweet, but they didn't do anything to deserve that car accident, they're taking out, there's a situation where they're gone and they pass away. But then the person who was the drunk one, the perpetrator, whoever whoever the person was that did the actual accident, that did the hit and run, and they're, they're, they're drunk and, or, or they're high or whatever, they don't have a scratch on them. No. Ever. You know, I want to bring something up, actually. When I was 11 years old, me and my grandfather were driving to the London Mosque, the original mosque. And I was, you know, I was a kid. I didn't wear my seatbelt at my time. My grandfather had a seatbelt, but it wasn't, you know, buckled in. And this guy's pulling out. And this guy behind us knows we're stopping because, you know, one of those houses that come off the road, you know, they back up. You know, they stopped traffic. This guy, I'm telling you, he stopped and then he drove. It was like an unpurposely, he was Afghanistan. And he just literally hit us. It was a hit and run. He took my grandfather to the hospital. My grandfather had to do back surgery and he was never the same after. And I was hurt too, but I didn't tell my mom at the time. Because she would have yelled at me. I told her, you know, you know, last a couple of years ago, I, you know, the reason I was injured at that time because I didn't wear my seatbelt. I was, I was stupid. You know, so, so, Joe, you know that picture I just I, I sent you? You sent me a picture? The ones I sent you, the, the car accident. I, I saw, I wanted to show everybody, but uh, you can. I didn't save it in chat. Can you send it to me again? Yeah. So, yeah. those pictures, those pictures I sent you, my hands, you can barely notice it, uh, especially on camera. Um, I'm going to try to see if I can show you as much as possible. Um, yeah, you're not going to really get the full extent of it. That again? I've, had, I've had, yeah, you're not going to get the full extent of it. Well, there you see how that, is, that little indent at the top of the hand? This indent right here, mm -hmm. that's a scar. I got scars on my other hand the same way. That is reconstructive surgery from that hit and run. Both my hands were crushed. I have maybe 75% usage. I have chronic, chronic back problems, and unfortunately, um, my military career is being cut short partially because of this. 
I haven't been able to do a lot in the past 10 years, almost 10 years because of that accident where I was able to work out every day. And Jess can tell you, she's seen pictures of me before the accident and compare it to now, it's completely different. You're never the same after an accident to that magnitude. And for that accident, um, it hit hard. And I had to get reconstructive surgery, like I said, both my hands were uh, crushed. They were basically having to have to be put out in whole nine yards. I don't want to show the license plate, but I'm going to show you guys. I don't have that card anymore, so you can show the license plate. It's okay. There's the card. Oh, my God. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Let's see look what Chris just said. Wow. Yeah. That's the worst feeling as a sibling to deal with something like that. In my heart and uh, my prayers go out to the family. Um, especially to a sister, I, I, you know, as someone who has lost their sister, I know the magnitude of how it happened with me when I lost my sister, but not like that in front of me. I can only imagine how hard she's taking it. Like my dad said, no, my, that's it. There's, you're done. Really? You can't, that's your sister. That's your daughter. That's your loved one. You just lost because out of a, of a stupid person doing that, you know. Yeah, it's going to take a lot. Forgiveness at the end, uh, there is, um, but it's going to take a long time, and it's rough. It's been a week, you know. At twelve fifteen, it will be exactly one weekend. At twelve fifteen, I want to have a moment of silence. You know, if you guys want to still stay around there, I want to have a moment of silence because she was just a young girl wanting to get chicken nuggets, like girls love to. I love my chicken nuggets too. Don't worry. My belly is full of chicken nuggets some days. <laughs> <laughs> They're good. I worked at McDonald's as much as I've seen how they made them. They're pretty damn good. And uh, it is one time with you. Listen, listen, I've worked at fast food. Those were my first two jobs. But let me tell you, when the moment I found out that Wendy's here was doing uh, doing a family pack of 70 nuggets for 10 bucks, I jumped on that in a heartbeat. 70 nuggets for 10 bucks? $10. Yep. Yeah. Where is this place? I'm coming down. It's Wendy's. <laughs> Everywhere. We don't have that here in Canada. It's like ten nuggets for like four bucks. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's it's ridiculous. You know the states. Their their portions for fast food is crazy. Like I went. I was in Pennsylvania in September, and the dollar menu. This guy gave us extra food. I don't know if the guy was half asleep, if he was drunk or whatever. But he gave us food. It would last two armies, two military. It was so much food. It was for a dollar. Here, there's no such thing as a dollar. Over there, there's a dollar. The dollar, the dollar in the U.S. is a lot better than the Canadian dollar. It was so good. And then we never get them up. I think that means it. You know? I think you're better than that. Hey, Chris, that, that's yeah. definitely what's going to happen. So, Joe, uh, I agree with Chris. At one at, at 12.15, put her picture up full screen, please, and we'll do a moment of silence for her. Sure, sure I will. I will. Man, that just... I can't. Oh, that hits home way too much for me right now. Yeah. She was a beautiful soul, and she did not. She shouldn't have went out like that, or now. And also, I wanted to say, Chris, uh, your version of what you did for O Canada, that was beautiful also, brother. He's a singer. Yeah. I've seen that. Kind of made me jealous. I wanted to kind of do the U.S. anthem, but I was like, yeah. Maybe next time. Maybe no, I'm, next. Good. I'm good. I'm good. Next I'm time, good. you will take over Joe's Fortune. I will be the guy that sits back, yes, and Noel can take over Joe's Fortune. I've been thinking about that for a while. I don't want to put that up there. You know, that would be great. You know, think about it, Noel. You know, <laughs> it's an honor. <laughs> you know, a guy, guy from Washington, D.C., you know. From well, the I will put it to you like this. I will put it to you like this. 
next week's show will be a little, little different with me. I will be in a different room, and Jess will be in Pennsylvania. Tuning in. So we will have a little different location for me. Actually, yeah, Jess was telling me, for, can I share about the Pennsylvania thing? Is that okay, Jess? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's fine. So uh, I was talking to Jess, Jess and Noel, you know, brother, sister, like my brother. She talked off there quite a bit. She's telling me she's moving to Pittsburgh. Oh, boy. This is why she's been talking to Pittsburgh all the time. Steelers and Penguins. She loves Crosby, and she loves the Steelers. I said to myself, you know what? Eventually, when everything is the coronavirus is over and all that, I will go, you know, I'll go over there, or if they come here, we can go watch a Maple Leaf game. That would be really awesome. I don't know if they're I'll be there. down for that. Oh, yeah. You know, that'd be, that'd be an honor. That'd be amazing, you know. Well, also, I'll give you a little bit of good news to uh, go with right now. I officially found out Wednesday that I will be out of the military within the next two months. Meaning the torture that I've had for the past 15 years is done. <laughs> I got I to give you a clap on that. I got to give you a great service. God bless you. God bless the United States of America. Thank you for all your service you have done for this great country. Thank you. Actually, if you see what's on the door behind me right there. Yeah, I saw that. I didn't know. I didn't want to say anything, but I saw something. That is my dress uniform. Uh, could you, yeah, I will play the song. Yes, Chris, I will. Yeah. Uh, send me the link on Snap, Chris. So I can copy that thing to my Facebook and so on. But yeah, Chris, uh, I definitely want to talk with you, Chris, offline because I want to do some collaborations with you, brother. Music work. M music work. Definitely music work. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I'm done. This whole body's done. <laughs> How do you feel yourself? Do you feel? Do you, do you, like I am, I am 35 years old. I feel like I'm 62. I've been, like I said, since that car accident, my body has never been the same. Um, so I constantly have a lot of aches, a lot of pain. Um, you know, when it rains, my hands, my knees hurt. You know, I used to be five foot eleven. I'm five foot nine now. Thank you, Army, for making me jump out of planes. <laughs> but uh, it's an experience that I loved when I first joined, and I just don't have that same passion for it anymore. I think one of the best things I've ever heard in my life is you never work a day in your life if you love what you're doing. And up until the past four years, I didn't feel like I was working. I felt like I was doing what I had to do because I loved it. And then about four years ago, that changed. Now, and you know I, am, I feel like I'm getting released out of jail. So I was like, yes. <laughs> and you know who's kept you going? Who's that? That beautiful young lady up there. Actually. She has been my rock. She you has definitely, rock. she has been someone who has Help me for everything and everything, anything that's been going on these past couple of weeks, especially the beginning of last week till Wednesday. She's been there for me, you know, especially the fact of like I came home and I just looked at her. I said, I don't want to do anything but go to sleep. And that's exactly what it was. You know, and I know even though she's going to be in Pittsburgh and I'm still stuck here, you know, it doesn't mean nothing. That's just literally like a five hour drive, which either of us will do in a heartbeat. So. That's hard, man. That's hard. You li you live with somebody for a very long time, and knowing they're they're gone away. You usually wake up, you see you see them in the morning, have breakfast with them. You know, we haven't even them. lived together that long, to be honest with you. What? Uh, five months. Five six months, months. Yeah. About five or six months. How long have you guys been together? About six like, months. Or six months. Still, you know, still. Yeah. Still. Just, we lived in the same building in the barracks room here, and she was on the second. Yeah, she was on the second floor. No, third floor. And I was on the fourth floor. You're a lucky man. You're a lucky man. All I can say. Nah, I think I'm the blessed one. But <laughs> we are both the blessed. <laughs> I bet you that those morning breakfasts are delicious in the morning. You know, you got the That's eggs. if we're up in the morning. Passages. Yeah. That's what you're gonna miss. You're gonna That's... miss those, Noah. <laughs> That's if we're awake in the morning. 
our dinners is where we really go. Oh, yeah. Sure so it's good. She loves when I cook. So because for me, when I cook, I cook everything. Absolutely, ghost. That's what we're all hoping for to here. See, here's the thing about that one, and I agree with it, but at the same time, I don't. And the reason why I say I don't, I agree with the whole thing as someone who who believes in what, what what's going on right now. I don't agree with it because of the fact of what does burning down local businesses do? Other than bringing the police officers around more and causing cra uh, chaos. You know, I, I, I pray that people come together and realize that if we're not together as one, we're going to fall as one and no one's going to care. No, absolutely. I mean, I'm all for, you know, peaceful protest. We can make a statement and not hurt local businesses, which entails that's what you're fighting for. Um, they're fighting for the community and fighting exactly. for all everybody's life and everything. And trust me, there's, I'm going to be honest with you. What you don't see on the TV, there's more than what you don't see. It's always going to be that way. Like I told Joe last week, we had this conversation. Um, you're not always going to see what, what they want you to see on TV. That You're not going to see what they want you to realize. And I'll be real with you on it. When it comes down to it, let's just look at it the real way. The real way is is that CNN, NBC, or Fox News, they're going to show you whatever's controversial and they want to show you because controversy sells. And let's, that's the real realness of it. Controversy sells. Are they going to show you anything else? No, because why are you going to tune into that? So don't always believe what you see on CNN unless you're there. You know, don't always, don't always believe all that stuff. That's like me and Jess today. We were in, we were in the middle of Washington, D.C. having lunch. And we hadn't done that. So we just wanted to go out and we wanted to go get something to eat. Middle of Washington, D.C. I want to say the White House was about three blocks away. Mm -hmm. Mind you, let me tell you right now, the White House is barricaded for six blocks up, six blocks down. And we were having lunch and all of a sudden you just see when I say a convoy of Cop cars, I'm talking about anywhere from like six to eight cop cars speeding with full full blaring sirens in one direction. And then you have all the National Guard coming in one direction. And I was looking at her, I was like, what the heck is going on? And me, I have a police scanner on my phone. So we were listening, trying to find it, couldn't find it. And then all of a sudden saying they're pushing the protest towards where we were and that the pro the protest that they were pushing was kind of more or less online turning into a right. So we were like, yep, time to go. And we got up and we left. And I, I told her that when we first got that, I said, the moment things start getting sticky, we're out. Because yep. we are not trying to get involved and we're not trying to get hurt. Was, uh, was, president, was your president in Washington? No, today he was in upstate New York. He was at West Point because uh, today was the graduation for the West Point graduates. Okay. I thought I heard something about that, but I wasn't on. Exactly, Alexis. I agree with that comment. Exactly. You know, peaceful protests are incredible. For the gentleman who passed away last night in Atlanta, um, I can't remember his name for the his first name for the for uh, his last name was Brooks, but uh. His family was out there protesting today. They're still protesting right now. They shut down an entire interstate. And I used to live in Georgia. So the part of Atlanta, that interstate that they shut down is huge. That is the busiest interstate in the state of Georgia, and they shut it down. And when they started burning down the Wendy's where he was shot at, all his family left and said, we want no part of that. I think this country needs a lot more than just prayers. I think this country needs a miracle. And I'm sorry, Joe, I know you support him and we support him because he is our boss. But right now that miracle is not Donald J. Trump. And I'm going to be honest with you, that miracle isn't Joe Biden. 
that miracle needs to be somebody else and that miracle that miracle is someone who is like a dr martin luther king jr not reverend al Sharpton, not jesse jackson we need someone who can literally come out and let that voice be heard have a strength in their voice and please like with, with that voice preach to both sides not just one both sides that's what is needed today and that's me as a minority considered minority in this, this country i'm spanish i'm 100 percent puerto rican and i'm considered a minority in this country and i'm telling you we need someone to speak to both sides because our children the next generation they're going to think that fighting is the only way that we can get our point across you can fight multiple ways but when you start using your hands and you start using weapons you're not going to get your point across you're just going to prove to the other side that we are exactly what they think we are and i'm gonna tell you right now as a minority in this country we are not animals we are not less than anybody else we are not anybody who is considered low grade we are beautiful people we are people who love we are people who care. We are people who cried and shed the same blood that anybody else does. And I'll let you know right now, I'm with anybody who believes in that we need a change, but we need to do it the right way. And Alexis, what part of New York are you from? This is in our book, in the Bible of Quran. Whoever kills an innocent life, it it is as if he has killed all of humanity. I'm not sure if you guys agree with that, but I 110% agree with that. Oh, we absolutely. Kill, no, you're, taking, you're taking away from the purity of life. Seriously. And when you stop someone's life, especially if you know they're younger, even then, you're taking away all the gifts that they can actually give to others and to serve your community. And I think now that we're finally, I know me personally, every time I hear about another name on the news or I read something on my phone that yeah, another person has died, it breaks my heart over and over again. And I think that people really need to start feeling what's being taken from us with every life because this isn't okay. And it's starting to change communities, not for the good. I mean, um, now, Alexis says she's from Brooklyn. I know, I know with uh, everything that uh, my father's been telling me because my father works in Brooklyn. Alexis, I'm from New York also. Uh, I'm originally from Harlem, New York. <laughs> we have an Alexa in the room, so it kind of hurt that. <laughs> But yeah. uh, no. <laughs> Alexis, I'm actually from Harlem, New York. I was born and raised in the Grant Projects on 123rd. Um, I've been to Williamsburg. It's one of my favorite parts of Brooklyn, actually. But uh, I know it's been crazy out there. My father's been telling me he works out in Brooklyn. Um, and it, it, it's just, how can I say this? It's just time for a change, man. You know, President, former President Obama said, we need a change. We do. We need a change. Because over the past 150 years of freedom, there has been no change. How is it that a country that released... Nelson Mandela escaped an apartheid dictatorship can change quicker and better than a country that's had this change for over 150 years. We want to be the top of everything as a nation. We want to be number one in everything. Let's not be number one in this category. Let's be number one in a category that should promotes change, that promotes a better future for everybody. No matter what your race, your color, your religion, your creed is, even your gender. 
we need as a people to show that if we want to be number one, we want to show the world that we're number one, be that number one for change. And the change being that racism is dead. Racism is a word of the past. Bigotry is a word of the past. Racism isn't born with people who are, oh, I'm, I'm white, so I'm born with being racism. No, racism is taught. Racism is learned. Racism is bred. Now's the time to kill that. Now this is the time to move past that. And now is the time to make a change. Joe, you want to start getting that video up? I got, I got it ready. I have it oh. up. No, I'm going to say one thing. Yeah. You're totally right what you just said. You're absolutely totally right. Totally right. But we're not going to have... Nobody's going to be on the same page, I'll tell you. There's always going to be the opposite. There will always be that person saying, no, I'm right, you're wrong. There will always be that person saying, you're not welcome, I'm welcome. But there will always be that person say, screw you, I'm going in. We're going to always have people in. But those are the people who think they know everything in the world. Going back to months ago, people thinking the coronavirus is a conspiracy, Okay. Calling Mr. Ja Lodonatus uh, a fake guy. Uh, oh, God. You know what I mean? When people work their butts off every single day to to provide provide for their family, and when per, a person says coronavirus is a conspiracy, those are the people really have not much to say. They're throwing it past you. But I'm sorry to say this, you're wrong. You're wrong about that because it isn't a conspiracy. People are dying. Not only, but people are dying. You know, maybe the statistics are not 100% right, but they're right enough. Okay. So those are the people that kind of tick me off a little bit. But believe me, those people eventually one day will know and understand I was actually the wrong one. I was the city of sin. And that guy one day will say, I'm, I'm wrong with I said. I apologize. Those are the people that should look at themselves in the mirror and say, who I am, not who they are. Who I am. That's what the people should be looking at. Well, I'll say I say this. Absolutely. We should have we should continue this conversation after this uh quick memorial. And the fact that it's quick, we apologize. Um the fact that this young woman lost her life, we apologize. Can you guys hear this? Yeah. You can hear that? Okay. Yeah. Okay, we got about a minute and 12 seconds left. Uh, guys, we're going to do a special uh, moment of silence. We're going to play the whole video. It's about three minutes. Three minutes and four seconds. It's Chris uh, Ricci, Like a Ghost. And uh, we want to listen to We're going to have a picture of uh, Leva in the background. And uh, this is a special moment for her and her family. And please, I got I will find a way to send this video to them because I think this is going to lock them. A lot to I love you too, Chris. You know, you, you, mean, you mean a lot to me, brother. And I, I will eventually come up to Toronto. We'll meet and have a nice, have a nice two and a half inch ribeye steak and have a good time. Love you too, brother. I love you, dear. Love you, Jess. Love you, the bomb. So, so. I love you, bro. We share the screen. Yeah, make it full screen, brother. Is that good? Yep. Yeah. You guys ready? Go for it. You guys can hear that, right? Yes. Yes.
Can you hear it? Can you guys hear anything? No, we can't hear anything. But... One sec. Can I uh, share another screen? Uh, is it through? Is it through uh, YouTube? Yeah. Send me the link on my Snap. Sorry, guys, about that. Hold on, Chris. We're going to get it going. Sometimes, you know, technology is not the greatest when the things you need to, to, to do, you know? You said it's like a ghost? What, what was the name of it, Joe? Uh, like a ghost. Got it. Yeah. Just just put the thing full screen.
I don't even know what to say after that. <laughs> she was a beautiful girl with a beautiful soul, and now she's in a beautiful place. That was very powerful. Chris, that was beautiful. That song was beautiful. I literally uh, gave me goosebumps. It made me very emotional. And it is a time to be emotional, time to, uh, to have feelings you know, for one another. You know, I want everybody to remember that anything can happen. Like they say, anything can happen on a given Sunday. Anything can happen on a given day. Absolutely. A young girl. You know, and I don't usually. Uh, make these kinds of videos, you know, I, I talk about it, you know, I give for a couple, but this is, you know, one video I'll be talking about, you know, for one show for a few hours, because I want everybody to remember who I am, to remember those I am. I love people, I know this person, I've never lied to people, I've never stepped on people, people have stepped on me over the years, but I just want you to always remember, I will always be here, it doesn't matter if I know that girl or not. I love her very much, and I hope the best for her up there, upstairs, you know. Let's switch gears. Let's go back to uh, we were talking Noel Jr. and Jess. Uh, I don't even remember what we were even talking about. Maybe you do, huh? Uh, yeah, I kind of got consumed. You know. Uh, we, we were hitting the point of uh, racism. Yes. Oh. <clears throat> when it comes to change, I believe that change starts with us as a community and as a people. And I'm sorry, but we need to start acting like the change that we need. Say one thing. Say one thing only about this protest. One thing. And people have been asking me all of that. I'll say one thing. Do you think this protest is going to change? Because I believe it won't. No. The only reason no, why exactly. I... I, I, I I'll say no, my straight answer no. But no my explanation for it a great man over 70 years ago marched the mall in DC, and his name was Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., gave that famous I Had a Dream speech. You have people of all nationalities there, people of different color, people of different races, people of different creeds, people of different religions. They were there, and they were all there for the same thing, and that being change. Since that 70 years has passed, countless minorities, and let me just say this the right way, not just countless minorities, but countless people have passed due to police brutality, due to lynching, due to hatred, due to bigotry. And that's just one part of it. There have been senseless hate crimes. Senseless. There have been senseless crimes everywhere because of color because of gender, because of race. I had high school friends 
I've known them since they were the oldest brother I've known. He was in my grade, and I've known him since I was 12. They actually had to move to Toronto. They left the country because of the actions of 9-11. Because to some people, the actions of one in a group represent that whole group. That isn't true. The actions of one defined a whole religion. That isn't true. The talk of one because they were one once one thing and now they're another makes them so bad that because it's that different. That isn't true. I will tell you this. This is what is true. In the past 70 years, the change implemented that we wanted, that Dr. Martin Luther King dreamt about, it was barely touched. It was barely done. And why do I say barely? Because the only part that was even remotely done was the fact that we got an African-American president in the United States. What change have we really given? What change has really happened? None. We still have hate. We still have people being bred to hate. We still have people being beaten on the streets because they of their color. We still have cops killing kids because they feel they're afraid because of their color. Let me let you know something, and I don't give a shit who gives who reports me. Excuse my language, Joe, but us as citizens are more afraid of you. I'm afraid that the fact that I can go home to New York City and be in the car with my cousins. And mind you, my family is mixed. I have cousins that are black. I have cousins that are Asian. I have cousins that are Muslim. I have cousins that are Middle Eastern. I have the United Nations in my family. And I'm afraid to be in the car in New York City, not for myself, but for my family. I'm afraid to walk down the streets of Washington, D.C. with my girlfriend because they're going to look at her and see that she's white and I'm, I'm more olive color, tan, and they're going to be like, he kidnapped her. I'm afraid because of the fact of anybody can see any other skin color and just see hate. <clears throat> so I say again, what have we changed in the past 70 years? And Joe... Excuse the way I'm going to say this, but we have not changed a damn thing. You want to implement change? You want change? Start doing it at home. Start doing it in the booths. Get those racist pieces of out of office and vote. You want change in the law? Get your butt up. Stop bitching about change and go vote. For someone that you believe that will fight for the people, no matter who their color is, what their race is, doesn't matter. You do something for you do something, you find someone that will actually fight for you. Fight for what you believe in, that will listen to you. But if you don't, when you sit at home and you just watch CNN, you watch Fox News. And you don't vote, you're not promoting change. You're part of the problem. And that's all I have to say. You're absolutely right. Uh, in my eyes, I'm sorry, if you're a bystander, you are just as much as guilty as the guy actually doing the action. This is the time for all of us to speak up and say something and do something. Like I said before, we need to be the change that needs to be seen. It starts with our communities, like you said, our homes, 
and it should branch off from there. And being violent isn't going to help anything. We all need to have honest communication and conversations. Does anybody in the chat have anything to say? We got we got at least five or six people watching. I want to say something. <clears throat> Go for it, brother. Going back to Noel's comment on your African American, you're African American, right? Am I right about that? You're Spanish, right? And uh, you got family that in the car. You feel comfortable, but you're worried about them. Believe me, I'm in the same boat as you. But I don't let that bother me. So, somebody's going to talk to me. Oh, really? oh, really? But when you have people talking behind their back, this is what I don't like about people. We shouldn't be afraid. No one should be afraid. Everyone should be welcomed into this country. Everyone should be welcomed in the United States of America, in Canada, and everywhere. But when we have selfish, ignorant people who think they know everything in the world and they know a tiny bit of this, how are we going to fix the problem? How are we going to make a change in people's lives? How are we going to tell our kids, our second generation, third generation, fourth generation, fifth generation, that, hey, this is okay to do? How come you can have a male, a, a different colored washroom, black washroom, and you know what? Why can't they all come together like 2020? I was watching a movie a few weeks ago with my uncle. It was, I can't remember what football movie it was, but they had a washroom for blacks and they had a washroom for whites. And I'm looking at my stuff. I said, I can't believe this. I just learned in the 60s, it used to be this bad. Why does it feel like we're going back to that time? Why don't we stand up and have a voice? Why does it have to always be violent? Why does it have to always be, I'm going to beat you up or I'm going to threaten you? Because we're too weak. We're too weak. And we need a person that needs to say the same words as you, Noel. Well, I only said, I only said part. I only said part of one that I wanted to say. And the, thing, the reason why I only said part, and as you can see, I'm getting, because whenever I talk politics or anything, I get a little bit this is not more politics. deep into it. This is not politics. This is more than politics, my friend. This is, this is the world. This is the world in, every, in sports as well. Oh. Like Jackie Maybe. Robinson. Going back to Jackie Robinson, okay? They didn't walk him on the team. He always had to be last. He shot by himself. Like, I have friends that are different colored. We bleed the same. We die the same. We eat the same. What's the big difference between a colored person? I just don't understand. And I don't understand. You know? And I've been waiting to say this for a very long time. And I said it in a proper way. I'm not offending anybody. But I'm telling you straight up what needs to be changed. Now, I'm just one voice. You can take this voice and throw it out of the garbage, throw it into Thames River or wherever you want. But I'm telling you what I think about the society we live in 2020. It's affecting not only myself, but affecting many, many human beings out there. Well, the difference between what you said and, and I said is, yeah, you, you didn't mean to offend anybody. I did. And I'm going to say right now, I said it at the end of my, my thing before, the people I want offended are the people who are sitting at home saying they want change, but they're not doing the right thing about it. And you're right, Rosie. They want us to fight. They want us to feel like we are those animals that they predicted. What do they used to call anybody who was a minority? An animal. Oh, you want to be with that animal in the same room as that animal? You don't want to be in a room with that with that beast. They're not worth your time. Did you guys know that in the early 1900s that Irish were considered a minority and they were beaten on just like African Americans? Shit, my race, my religion, my my people 
Puerto Ricans, we were slaves. Very little known fact. Whether you were my complexion or darker. And it didn't matter. I'm tired of the fact that I have to play nice because of the fact of somebody might feel like, oh my God, that hurt my feelings. Well, you know what, Joe? I'm about to get real on it. So I'm just going to let you know right now. I don't care if I hurt your feelings. Pull up your panties. It hurt my feelings. Pull up your panties and start acting like a human being. You sit there at movies and spend tons of money on movies and all these little intricate things that don't mean nothing when we die. We sit there and spend money on flashiness. And I'm one that's guilty of it too. I have all the latest freaking Apple products. Granted, some of them were gifted. Thank you. I love you. <laughs> yeah, it's different stuff that makes nobody laugh. <laughs> but no, let, let's get to seriousness. You want to know the seriousness of the situation is? The situation is this. Yes, there is still hatred in this world. Yes, there is still bigotry in this world. Yes, there are people who don't give a shit who you are. They will shoot you down on the street just because your color is different than theirs. There are people in this country, and let's, let's just be real, not just this country, but the entire world. There are people in this world that don't believe that we are the same as them. Don't believe that anybody should be able to be on the same plane as you because their status is higher. Yeah, granted, you got a lot more money than me. Good for you. At the end of the day, when we're all said and done, you're either going to be in the urn just like I am or you're going to be dirt in the dirt being worm food just like me. You think your status on the face of this earth is going to end up making you going to see whatever God you believe in and you're going to be, oh, hey, you get to go to the VIP section where everybody else is in. No, everybody goes to the same section. It all depends on how you lived your life. And guess what? You can ask for forgiveness as much as you want. But if you've done enough where you're not going to see the maker and those pearly gates, or if you don't get to go see Allah, because you did something in the wrong way, or you don't get to go see uh, uh, anybody who rose with Buddha or any whatever religion. I'm just naming off a couple. It's because of the way you lived. It's not because of your status. It is not because of your religion. It is not because of oh, I am white. I am this color, I am that color, I am brown, I am purple, I am green. It's not because of none of that. It's because of the way you lived in your heart. It's because of the way you lived your life and how you prepared those who were your future for their lives. It's the way you conduct yourself as a human being. I'm going to say that one more time. It is the way... You conduct yourself as a human being. Not how you conduct yourself as a rich person in Beverly Hills. Not how you conduct yourself as a person who is rich in Russia or Germany or Spain or Africa or Brazil or Central America. It is how you conduct yourself as a human being. Ugh. And if you do not conduct yourself properly, then fine. Live your way that you want to live right now. But just remember, he may forgive, but he doesn't forget. And what he doesn't forget, you will pay for in eternity. Everything is and that will be your hell. Your hell won't be sitting there and saying, wow, I'm getting burned all day. Your hell will be reliving your worst moments as a human being for the rest of your life. The rest of your eternity will be re your own hell that you created. Because that's what hell is. Hell 
is your own creation. So you want change? Get your asses up. Go vote. Go do the right thing. Implement the right people to help that change. Teach your children what is right, even if they are being taught wrong somewhere else. And what is right is to love, not to hate. What is right that even if the people who hate us want to hate us, you still love them. You still pray for them because that is right. Those people who are all against us, you pray for them. You love them because that is right. I have three kids. I have an 11-year-old. I have one who's about to be seven years old at the end of this month. And I have a five-month-old. All of them are mixed. All three of my kids are mixed. Half Puerto Rican, German, Irish, God, Scottish, Italian, English. But guess what? They're all going to know the same thing. Because the moment they come on, they say they're Spanish, people are going to hate. And that's what I'm going to show them, that people, no matter how much they hate, you love them. Noel? Yes, sir. I love you, man. I love you, too. I love you, too. You're absolutely right. I'm glad we can have somebody who can finally say something. Oh, we're gonna be near. We're gonna be near. Uh, you started good, and you said it the right way. You said it professionally, exactly the right way. I want to play something. It's a father forgiving a serial killer that killed his son. I want you to listen to every bit of what this. Thing. He's Muslim, and he has um, some amazing words. It made me cry twice watching this video. I watched it multiple and multiple times. It's something very sweet you guys are this video. You guys can hear that, right? No. No. Can you hear it? No. Let's see. You might have to put your speaker on. How about now? Wait. Can you hear that? Yeah. Barely, yeah, but. One sec. You guys can maybe read the words. I don't know what's, what's happening. Yeah, it has words, so we should be fine. Yeah.
I've seen I've seen that one before, and that one always hits home. That is, uh, yeah, quite the human being. <clears throat> After his son getting killed and saying that, I don't know. But it's true love to God. It really is. He's not angry. So angry at the devil. Exactly. And unfortunately, some people don't do not go to that conclusion. And I respect whatever you guys believe. If you guys don't believe, that's up to you. But what man what this man what this man just said to this serial killer, there is something out there. That's all I have to say. No, absolutely. Just in a while, what do you have to say to that that video? Yeah, it's home, and I agree. I mean, the fact that you no, know, he didn't blame him; he blamed the devil because the devil is in everybody's ear. And I agree with it. You know, and you know, I'm, I, I, I will say this: I'm I'm not Muslim, but I grew up with. Muslims. I've grown up working. My first real job as an adult was for a Muslim, and I love that man to death. You know, and I know he's right now with Allah because that's who he believed in. And my sign of respect for him every day when I came into work is just like how I do it too, Joe. I always came in as Assalamu alaikum every time I walked into work. And I love that man to death. I would have done anything for him. And yeah, we don't have the same beliefs, but guess what? We all, as long as you believe in something, something righteous. What I mean by righteous is believing in something that makes you a better person, makes you better spiritually. Then it doesn't matter what you believe in. As long as it's not negative, it does not matter what you believe in. And I'm not saying there's any religions that are that I believe are negative because that's not my personal view. But as long as you're believing in something positive and it's making you be in love and be happy and not causing harm to anyone, then I have no problem with it. But to show, to see the, sh the, the amount of love that that father had because that's what he believed in. That is one of the best men you'll ever meet or ever see on the face of this earth. That is one of the purest hearted people you'll ever see on the face of this earth. To sit there in front of his son's killer, forgive him and love him. Hug him. And <clears throat> hug him. That's pure purity if I've ever seen it at the most. Man, y'all making me emotional tonight. Try to make me emotional tonight, Joe. <laughs> I'm trying to make it over there. You know, uh, it's just too much, man. Love is it, great. Love is really great. Really is. Yeah. I appreciate, and this is my family. I got family upstairs. I got family in my cousin. This is my family, too. You know, I always, you know, these shows are done. I always rewatch, and I'll tell you this on air. Every time I watch you guys, especially you, that I have two remarkable human beings that are on my life. Not only on my life, but on my show. 
you know, they welcome me anytime, you know, and they ask me if I need anything. I don't get that. I don't get people like that every day. You guys are one of a kind. I just wanted to tell you that, that every time I watch you guys, you guys really put a nice spin in my heart. I got more faith. More faith too. Mm -hmm. That's, I appreciate you having me and Jess on your show. I know she's going to say her piece, but I appreciate it. Um, since day one, you've been a brother to me. So, speaking of which, I am happy from what what you told me before when you sent me on Snapchat. I'm happy that Mojo's doing a lot better. He yeah. looks a lot better, and I am so happy that prayers have been answered. You know, thank you for that. Oh, and sure. you know, yeah. keep getting better, Mojo. We want you That's back on the show. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's see if I get any photos of it. Uh, show the fans. Actually, I do. Let's do share screen, share. There he is. <laughs> the moment I seen him take a picture with me, that's the moment I know. This, this son of a gun is back. He's back for the duty show. And then we have this one, you know. He's still uh, with the word. He's he's not eating a lot, but he's eating okay. You know, he said to me today that I hate hospital food. I can't stand it. You now we gotta give him homemade food or he only eat hospital food. Oh, your dad must love that picture. He was in the Canadians T-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> this is the one that I always look back to. He's sitting there. He's, look, he's looking at the camera, he's smiling, and I can see that, that, that good old smile coming back. And you can go back to one night games, go back to WWE, spend time. You know, one day you go to watch us new you in the world, guess, and moan all that to have a great time. So that's the picture that I said, man, oh man, excuse my language, but he would love when I, he loves when I say this. This son of a bitch is back for good. You know, <laughs> it's so great to have uh, somebody that. Um, has gone through that to me. Directly, face to face, go out there. Thank you so much for your prayers. And Jess, thank you so much for your prayers. Without your prayers, I don't know if I would be here today. I swear to God, I don't know. Thank you so much. Oh, of course, Joe. Like, I, you're my adopted brother, all right? <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> and I always have your bag. And, you know, I really appreciate you having me on the show. And just know that, like, this is, I bang for this on Saturdays. <laughs> and I will always be here to support you, support your show. And literally, if you ever need anything, feel free. Thank you. The same goes to me. If you ever need anything, you need help, anything, contact me. You know where to contact me. I know, just more shout out Snapchat. Show the funny shit to give you know to contact me, you know? <laughs> Take your devil one on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I keep forgetting that one because I don't use Twitter that much, but I use it enough so people can find me on there. So when you said Take your devil out, oh, it's perfect how you said it. It came up perfectly, you know? <laughs> hey, that's how we met. Yeah, that's how. We, yeah, Charlotte Flair. We can talk about the story forever. We can talk about the hand sanitizers forever. You know, <laughs> get all you know those stuff. Oh, the hand sanitizer. Every <laughs> single time, stuff my hand. You know, every single time you say that story, I start laughing. I remember the first time you told me it. It's always good every time. It doesn't get doesn't but, get old. It doesn't get old. But there's one person we've been missing, and he hasn't been on for a couple weeks. Where is he at? You know who I'm talking about. Still in Mr. Lord Nattis? Yes. He's in Dallas, actually, I heard. He's doing some business down there, actually. Him and his wife. And he's been, has he been watching? He's been watching, yes. He's been watching. Okay, so he's been watching like the whole thing, reviewing everything? He's been watching. He's been he okay. has, if you have Facebook, I'm on Facebook. Okay, I'm gonna do this. Mr. Laurinaitis. All right. Go now. Mr. Laurinaitis, this is Noel calling you, telling you get your butt back on the show. We haven't heard from you in a very long time, and we miss you. Seriously, come back. <laughs> he's, he's, he's the best. I love what he says. 
I'm mad. And then Roger Badawi mocks him. Oh, my God. <laughs> But now he got me on that one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was a. I shouldn't have laughed at it. But I showed John. I showed John. He started dying laughing. He's frozen. <laughs> Noel's gonna be back. He just something went up, okay. and he cut out. Yeah, John hasn't been on for a few weeks. He should be back on soon. You know? I don't know if you know him. Probably. Oh, know. yeah. I'd say this. I've been in the comment section. So, I, you know, yeah, he definitely needs to come back on. I kind of miss him. Uh, no, right. I do miss him. He, he's cool. He's, he's, a, he's a funny guy, a very respectful, very honest guy. And uh, hopefully he'll be back on very shortly. You know, he'll. Uh, Fingers crossed. You know what? When the borders open, when the borders reopen, he's supposed to come down actually to. Toronto for some business. So I said, John, when you come to Toronto, you gotta, you better get your butt here to London. We gotta have a show. To, we gotta sit here and we gotta have stream yards together. You sit here, have your whatever drink you want. You know, sit down with your Steelers, little, you know, type of and you can talk to them. leather, leather jacket. You know. Oh, I'm... oh, he'll love that. He'll That'd sit. Be amazing. Noel, this is what I'll say. Noel Junior, he's the best. That's right. <laughs> you said it perfect on the dot too. <laughs> Say that again. I'm done, ladies and gentlemen. I'm done. One more time. Say one more time. <laughs> one more time. Hi, <laughs> Jack. Right. <laughs> we got a Mr. mock on. Mr. Madow is going to be like, wait a minute, that's my thing. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Ghost said, is, so is COVID over now? No. Ghost, it's going to come back with a vengeance at the end of August, early September, right when flu season hits. I guarantee it. <clears throat> I hope not. I, hope. I want the borders open. I want to go down to Wisconsin. I want the borders open. I want some flapjacks. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about that. That's right. I will, I will take my butt over. All right, listen. I don't care about U.S. Border Patrol. I, I'll climb a fence. I'll climb a wall. <laughs> I don't care. I want to go to. I want to go to Canada. My cousin came from. She lives in Michigan. She's a doctor. She came through. I'm back. I'm not a doctor. I work in surgery. But I'm you not probably, a doctor. You can probably still do that. You can. There's, 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 there's ways. Oh yeah, there's ways. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to tip somebody. <laughs> you can tip me here. <laughs> here, Noel. Here's, here's, here's five thousand dollars. Jump over. Just get back to me when you get back. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to go to a game too. No kidding. Yeah, I make three. Yeah. I miss going to a game. Bro, it hurts. Yeah. Bro, I'm trying to hit Philly and get a Philly cheesesteak. Ghost, where are you? It's in Brooklyn, I heard. Was it? Was it? No, not Brooklyn. No, ghost, no, Alexis is in Brooklyn. Ghost is not being a ghost today. He's being good today, you know. And Alexis, <laughs> Alexis, Alexis is right next to the Barclays Center. She's in Williamsburg. She's right near the Barclays Center. So she's trying to watch the New York Islanders. Toronto. Ghost is in Toronto. Let me stop for a sec. You know, not right Toronto like that. You gotta have a capital T. People in school, you. Yeah, uh, uh, he got it. He got it. Look, 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 look. He there said T dot. T dot. <laughs> I used to always get yelled at for not putting a capital at the beginning of a city, right? And I would get like A's, right? Or like 98, 99. But one time I got 99 because I didn't put a T on New York. <laughs> you know? So, Alexis, that's not even close. T O R O N T O. And I did Buffalo one time too with the lower case B. No, I'm like serious. We should, we should have a session seriously on school. What, what's capital? Is it capital? I'm, I'm so serious. The moment that the borders open and they have any type of sports going on, I'm going to Canada just to go to a game. You why know, are you going to Canada? They'll be like, why are you going to Canada? I want to go watch a freaking game. I've watched all of them in the U.S. I want to do it in Canada now. <laughs> Come to Toronto, man. You have a block. I went to Germany. I've seen a game in Germany. I want to do it in Canada now. 
<laughs> Germany? Wait, what did you do in Germany? I was there for a couple of months, and I saw a Bayern Munich soccer game. What? And this guy doesn't even invite? Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Ooh. This was let, let's be real. This was 2010. I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was 10 years old. Oh my god, 2010. And I was watching Bayern Munich beat the hell, and I say beat the hell out of everybody. That bottom, the, I think the final score of that game was like 12 to three. It was a bad day. Oof. My cousin, one day we played with Bayern Munich. I would love to go see another Bayern Munich game. But then again, I would love to go to a freaking sports game. Yeah. We'll, we'll go. I, like I said, the, we'll, go, we'll come to Toronto. You guys, and then come to London because there's a, the, the hockey OHL games, you would love them. You know? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Honestly, to me, the, most, the best hockey games in the world are the minor leaguers. I used to have uh, in Columbus, they had, at the time, they were called the – Columbus Cotton Mouse, and I used to go to their games. Now they're called like the Columbus River Dragons. River Dragon. But let me tell you, I used to go to them games, and I was happy because at that time, you know how much it was for season tickets, right on the glass, for a minor league hockey game, well, ho- hockey team. I paid at that time. It was like for four tickets, season tickets. I paid four hundred dollars. For four tickets, okay. season tickets, That's a good deal. on the glass. 100 bucks, 100 bucks. I, I'm not a big fan of the glass. I am not. Oh, I love it. Because I'll tell you something. You can't see the puck on the other end if they're fighting through it. You know what I mean? Oh, no. We're, so where I was on the glass, I was right next to the home team's, uh, home team's bench. This way or on an angle like this? or which... No, literally, my seat was on the border. I, I, I could touch the same. I'm trying to see the Knicks play. I'm done. I'm okay. done. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> the Knicks? Are you kidding? The New York Knicks? The worst team. <laughs> now this guy's taking <laughs> insult. Come on, the Knicks. Jeez. Are you planning on seeing them in Philly? Or are you planning on seeing them in Madison Square Garden? That's my only question, Ghost. Go to Philly. Good, good to Philadelphia. So, so you, like, my, my question for you, Ghost, is are you planning on going all the way to Philly to watch the Sixers beat the hell out of them? Or are you planning on going all the way to Mass Square Garden to watch whatever team counts on them in, in, in Mass Square Garden? And this is a Knicks fan saying this, so be aware. I am a Knicks fan. I like RJ, too. Uh, you know what? Alexa, I mean, of course, of course. I was waiting on it. I knew Alexis was going to say it. I knew it. <laughs> Soon they're going to say Alexis and Jess is going to get the Alexa. You know, little scary thing I, actually, I turned her off Did because you? I didn't want it happening again. Good. She annoys me at, one, at 6 o'clock in the morning. In the morning? At 6 o'clock in the morning, she'll go off and start telling me, telling me, uh, oh, hey. The weather today is I'm like shut up, Alexis. <laughs> Alexa, sorry. No, uh, good. At, at this point, lol, bruh. Don't don't do it at MSG. The tickets at Madison Square Garden are ridiculous. Um, for nosebleeds, you're still paying in the hundreds, so it's not worth it. Go anywhere else. And I know Alexis is gonna say, go to the Barclays, watch the Nets pounce on them. This made my day. Oh, you lucky. Never mind. This it's made Kelly my Kelly. day. That made my day. I it's just Kelly had, Kelly. I thought about the all night to just put that up. I'm so mad now. Did you see the interview me and her? Yes. Yeah. That was amazing. But it's Kelly Kelly. And so mad. So mad. Dude, I used to. What's the word? Being, I spent so much with Kelly Kelly when I was younger. I used to watch everything about her, right? Mm-hmm. You know what, what I like now? What switch gears to Charlotte Flair? You know what I mean? And I mean an obsession that I would love everything about her. You know, her wrestling moves, 
how she talks. She's she's great at everything, you know. And when I'm I I'm sorry, but well, bring me Paige. You want Paige? I want Paige. Okay. Well, you know, Booty has some connection. We'll see what we can do. Oh please, Booty, you get me Paige, I'll be happy as hell. You get me Paige. You get, I get you Paige. You get me Charlotte Flair. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I got a little. I got a little bit of a more leeway than you think. Yeah, I know. This guy has connections <laughs> left and right. <laughs> Who is that? Cody Rhodes. When? Last year. He didn't show me that picture. Yep. yep. This guy goes. He goes to airports. He sees Joey Bats. He goes to. At a shop. He meets. This person goes to meet Charlotte. This guy's connection. I think this guy is actually a former wrestler. I don't know. Kind of. Do you know who Mar Marty Skrull is? I do know who that is. The villain? Yes. <laughs> Just you're a damn lucky girl. <laughs> yes, I am. That's why I'm the one that's blessed. Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> you want to know how close I was? I'll show you. I'll show you how close I was. No. Watch when he comes out. Are that, you kidding me? That's how close I was. Where does this guy get these tickets from? The same place I sent you to get the tickets. And the one that gave me hundred fifty dollar uh, fee, whatever. Well, you decided <laughs> to go in the lower levels. That's not my call. No, but it was a good price until the hundred fifty dollar fee, extra fee. You no, know? I don't pay that much. Mm -mm. I don't know why. She knows. She knows. We got free tickets. Free, like free food. Who doesn't go for the free tickets? You know, come on, man. You gotta go for the stomach, and you gotta go for the free stuff, right? We got Absolutely. free tickets. We got free tickets to the first AEW Dynamite t uh, TV show. Man, I wish I was Jess. You know, I wish I was. You know who Ray Knight is? I've heard former of third baseman for the New York Mets, nineteen eighty six World Series. Yes, when they won the championship. Yes, I do. I've heard of his name. Huh? I could do this for days, bro. Oh, I know. She knows. I got you celebrity have, pictures. Like an album who you met and put it on like your channel, or have like oh, a little yeah. tribute on your show. How much do you watch of UFC? You know what? As much as I don't talk, I watch quite a bit of it. I, I watch enough of it. So you know who Rashad Evans is? I do know who that is. Help me, Lord! Take me, Lord! This guy, man! And look at his military. Oh, I'm, I'm the tough one. <laughs> man, you're lucky. You ever, seen, you ever seen Dog the Bounty Hunter? Yes. Don't tell me you met him. Do not you, tell me you met him. Do you know his son, Leland? The one with yes. the long ponytail? Jess, is this photoshopped? No, it's not. <laughs> this guy... <laughs> He's literally met, like... Almost everyone. It's crazy. He goes, he's like at the. He's like those one of those guys, you know, that buy the the right vehicles or the right groceries on sale. He's like the right guy for that. You know. Oh yeah. That's Listen, he helped me get a huge deal on my new truck. So. <laughs> there he is one of those guys. Yeah. yeah. I put it like this. It doesn't even go to just uh, celebrities that are like celebrities in like the sports world or anything like that. I can give you a political celebrity. Let me put your screen. Yeah. Would you like to see a political celebrity? Yeah. Do you know who Mad Dog is? Of course I know who that is. And for everybody out there who's wondering who I'm talking about, General Mattis, also known as the Mad Dog. Look at this. A... Alexa met the Bella Twins and Dan O'Brien. I met I met one of the Bellas. Mm -hmm. actually, I would love to meet the wow. Bellas. I have her autograph, actually. Give me Nikki. Why Nikki? Why Nikki? Yeah. Because Bree has Daniel. 
And she has a boyfriend, the other one. I know. I'm not meaning in that sense. Just give me Nikki. Nikki seems like she'll be more fun to hang out with. You know, it'd be more, you know, it'd be actually more fun to hang out with. Seriously, seriously. Mm-hmm. That's the facts, boy. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no, <laughs> my favorite guy, my favorite guy. <laughs> this is Photoshop. It can't be real. <laughs> Oh, you want to no, know how no, it's, real? it's real? You want to know how real. I can tell you it's real? I believe you. I'm being sarcastic. I believe you. I'm gonna show you. No, no. Put me back on full screen. So, <laughs> each picture, each picture, just to show you it's real. Each picture gives you a location. The location of that one says, Walter Reed National Military Medical Center. <laughs> Date and time. It is a real picture. Where did you find him? I was coming into work. Let me know if you guys in the United States of America. Okay. I have met him. Donald hey. J. Trump. I have met Donald J. Trump. You have pictures of him? No, I wish. You weren't allowed. Is he, he's a nice man, huh? I seen that. Joey Betts. <laughs> Actually, maybe I, I might one day have an you know opportunity to get an autograph or something. You know, I want to try to do something. Oh, most definitely. Trying to see if I have any other ones on here. The I doubt it. Meeting the governor is meeting you know, the whole Like, holy smokes, man. I oh, mean, I have plenty I can show you, but. I'm telling I'm you, sure. you should make an album and put it on your show, have it on your show like an intro. You no, know, I'd be sick. <laughs> like the intro I have now? And then I'll say, no, this is all photoshopped. <laughs> 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 I'm kidding. <laughs> you want to see an old picture, Joe? Of, uh, who? And I'll give you a guess. And whoever's still in La La, La Land there in the comment section, you get a guess too. I'm going to pull up a picture. I want you to say how old you think I am in this picture. Ready? Yeah. 18, 17. You know so again, what? damn, oh damn, you are a goddamn sexy pinata. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is. So again, if you, Alexis, you're out there, how old do you think I am in this picture? You can take me off little screen. Oh yeah, <laughs> you, you are the <laughs> doctor. You are the scholar. You are everything, man. <laughs> Hey, what'd you say was the age, Joe? 17, 18. Okay. Ghost is 22. Like 22. 22? Okay. Alexis, you have any comment on it? I'll give Alexis like another minute and see if she comes up with it. 19. Jess, you want to take a comment on it? You've already told me, so I don't feel like it's fair. Okay, so you, yeah, you stay quiet. Joe, what'd you say? 18? 17, 18. You're going to laugh when I tell you this. Probably 13. Just give him the answer. It's your photo. I was 14 years old in that picture. Damn, you're looking stat like that. 14. I've had a full beard since I was 13. I'm a hairy beast. You're a hairy beast. That comes out of nowhere. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, look, this is how I get down when I cook. That looks good. That's chicken, uh, sausage, and meatballs with like, pasta. It looks like oh, pasta, but like French fresh fries. Oh, just can tell you, I get down. Oh, heck, we both do. Oh, yeah, she can cook her butt off. Did you cook that? Yeah. That looks like a nice two and a half inch ribeye steak. Alex did actually. It. That was it was a London it was a London broil that I sliced down. Good for you, man. Oh, I get it. Ian. 
I love cooking. It's like one of my relaxers. Plus, it's so nice to eat well. It does, oh, yeah. yeah. I love, like, I had today. Today, oh, okay. I even cook Indian food, bro. Joe and his steak. Yeah, my steaks. I even cook Indian food. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Here. I like Indian food. I only had it one time. It's tikka masala over rice. It looks really good. Chicken tikka masala to be 100%. That was really good. You said you like your steak, Joe? Yeah, I do. Oh, man. <laughs> this guy's making me... Oh, this... <laughs> oh, I, I, when it goes to steak... So this is what my steak looks like before I throw it in the oven. Wait, keep that there. Ah, looks good. What kind of mm -hmm. steak is? Uh, this one. What was this one? This was the chuck roast. Yeah. We're gonna. <clears throat> oh, we've been on for two hours and forty-eight minutes. Oh. Wow, this one. Yeah, we've been on. Yeah. Now you got me talking about food. <laughs> Joe, I'm hungry now. Oh, you shouldn't eat right now. It's too late, actually. It's got to pull up on water. That's right. Water. <laughs> Says the person drinking a Smirnoff. <laughs> Let her drink. She hasn't eaten all day. Yes, she has. Yeah. Yeah, I'm eating good today. You eating good? I spoiled her. Okay, yeah, I got this. So he took me to Ali's and like the burger, like no joke, was like this thick. And I mean, it was greasy and it was juicy. They didn't overcook it. They had like really nice sauce on it. And I took like one bite. I was just like, oh. Tell them about the fries. Are you those girls that just cover your face? No, she's not. She's not. Oh, yeah, no, like I'm a mess when I eat. Tell them about the fries. And the fries were like not lightly seasoned, but perfectly seasoned. And they had this little like dip in uh, barbecue sauce, and it was so good. It's like a party in your mouth. Now, don't ask how much I paid. <laughs> a lot of money for two burgers and two guess. fries. Let me guess. Let me guess. Forty-five dollars. A little less. Ooh. $42.95. $37.87. Oh, that's a lot of money for burger. Uh -huh. Here's a shocker for you. There he is. What kind of gun is that? M249, some machine gun. Those are good. I'm looking at everything I have here. Guys, we're going to go on for a few more minutes. You know, Booney's getting tired. The suit's getting... <laughs> That's why my tie came off. Yeah, that's what, what's different about you. I, I had to, bro. I had to. You like the suit? The suit's okay. Oh, yeah. No, the suit's, suit's nice. Good. This is an older one. One of my originals. No, it looks good. Oh, my little man. I just rolled past a picture of a little man. Okay, I'm, I'm going to make this. I'm going to make this deal. And it's, you know what? The promise is going to come right. When you guys come to Canada, I'm taking you guys out for a nice steak dinner. The keg. Nice ribeye steak. I'm taking you guys both. And you guys just sit there. Nice smile. Yeah. Okay. Like Down. That. Hey, All you had to no say argument. was steak. All you had to say was steak. I'm good. I'm there. No questions. I love steak. That's primary food group. It's the only thing I eat. <laughs> well, it's it's tastes good. You can make it several different ways. It's actually relatively healthy for you. Where are you, John Lord? This is when we need him. He'll tell you how he yes. eat steak. I should call him up now. Hmm. Oh, we're waking. Hmm. 
What I made deer meatballs the other day. Oh, those are so good. How's tonight's show, guys? The fans out there, what do you think of the show tonight? Yeah, fans. Different. It was different today. It was very different, but it was, uh, I had to do it. I didn't have to, but I, I wanted to. Oh, my God. This guy. Mm. There's your steak, Joe Booney. That's a, now that's what I'm that's what I'm talking about. You get that, you know, you get the steak, the onions, the mushrooms, you know. You see that Montreal steak, you know, pepper, and you're all oh, there's Montreal on it. Is there Montreal steak seasoning? Yes, that's how I play with it. I also put a little bit of Spanish seasoning in the adobo. Let me see before we go. I want to see something actually. I think I have uh, we have a thing on uh, Facebook steak I ate. Oh, you sent me that one. Yeah, I want to show you. That. Where is it? Videos. Let's go. Oh, here you go, Joe. Steak and lobster with asparagus. Mama, can you please make me steak, asparagus, and some pepper? I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> and you see the you see the butter for the lobster? Oh man, you're making me drool all over. <laughs> I got a funny video if you want to see a funny video. Yeah, sure. Is that a lemon? That's a bull. <laughs> uh, here's one. This one. This one is a granny. Joe, it's almost one thirty. Leave her alone. Laugh out loud. Is that your grandma? No, it's not mine. Hold on. <laughs> she farted in her hand. My mom is actually What? Oh, you called her? I think I woke her up. <laughs> She's going to hurt you. Oh, Joe's in trouble. You wake up. Maybe one day we'll find out. But she was laying on the couch. She heard you. She was like, "What he said about steak?" <laughs> and we just, had, we just had a nice meal of uh, some uh, shish kebab and you know some good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I have fun. I play on. I used to play on TikTok a lot. So me and my buddies used to do videos. So I have one where oh, is the steak one. It's been a while. Yeah, this one. I used to do this one. This was me and my buddy. His name's Ivory. He's down in uh, Alabama. It's a scene from I guess uh, the Fast and the Furious movie between Jason Statham and The Rock. Mm -hmm. It's just hilarious. It's not like your voice, too. <laughs> you better find Can't find the steak one. I want to play, actually. my sister. There's one I want to play. Where is it? Go for it. Where is it? <laughs> this little kid. <laughs> my sister's so cute. <laughs> Just watch this. It's like a few seconds. You want to see Cooper? <laughs> Did you hear that? You hear what she said? What she just said? <laughs> I'll play it again. 
You ready to get sugar? <laughs> wow, Alexis, what's your what's your TikTok? I'm enjoying tonight's show, guys. I am. Oh, I'm loving tonight's show. <laughs> oh, absolutely. So we had tears and crying and you know mumbling. Now we got the laughs going. Where's that? That's for you, Ghost. That is the Lincoln Financial Field in Philly. Oh, Chicago for a sec. No, that's Philly. It was a rainy day. Went there for the Army Navy game. You guys would be so fun actually going watch the game. Right there, I try to give it a few examples of saying something like one time we're at a Blue Jays game, you know, people were saying two low whiskey, and then I said, Let's go Packers. And then the one said, Let's go Packers. And it kind of went and went and went and it went so long. And people are like, What a baseball game. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> you know, the game beat it. Let's go Packers. And when they said, What? And let's go. And it just kept going and going. It was really cool. Oh my gosh, that sounds like so much fun. Um, Noel froze. I'm good. No, I'm good now. Oh, okay. Never mind. And there's this one star I actually wanted to bring up last week, but I forgot about it. Is the girl. Look what Alexa said. Look what Alexa said. Who do you like, Alexa? The Giants? No, she's probably a Jets girl. The Jets? Horrible. Well, these two. Uh, Girls that were drunk and they liked my glove. And I got this glove from the yard sale. I got it for like two bucks and it's really nice and expensive and easy. I really like your glove. Can I try it? Yeah. I'm not sure. Uh, 20 bucks. My dad just bought it. If it's $65, take it or leave it. So I thought about it. We can be back and get some more beer. We came back and here. Here's sixty five dollars. We gave me sixty five dollars to pick the glove. We were drinking, they're partying, and um, there was a ball coming up in the air, right? It was about probably inches away, inches away from this ball coming on up. What happens? The little kid came in and caught it. Right? You know, one of those, uh, one of those ace, <clears throat> little ace guys from the Blue Jays. You know, they come in, they have a little glove like that. And then we back. Can you hold that glove for a sec? I'm gonna glove back. Uh, the learning that I never came back. I got the money and I got my glove back and I got some more tickets for the Blue Jays next day. <laughs> it was the best ever. I wasn't scamming anybody, but hey, if somebody's offering me sixty-five dollars and says I'll give you the glove back, we'll get some more beer, I knew they would never come back. They would be, you know, th thrown out from security or something. It was the best feeling. I was back in twenty eighteen. Yeah. That's awesome. She says she's a Saints fan. Saints, I respect Drew Brees. I love Drew Brees. He's a good quarterback. Now, while doesn't like he has that look to him, I don't know. <laughs> no comment. You get what he said? Huh? You get what he said? Um, no, I have nothing to do with that. He can say whatever the hell he wants. Uh, I just, you know, they're NFC. <laughs> Come on, Alexa. What's wrong with you now? Now you're a radish and cougar. You're Blue Jays. Blue Jays, ew. Come on. Alexis, who's your baseball team? Joe and if Carter. you tell me if you tell me the Yankees, oh, I'm going to throw some stuff at you right now. So please, please tell me the Yankees. Wow. Tell me the Yankees. One minute. First show in three hours in over six years. Wow. Well, three hours, show. Yankees. No, that's Ghost. Go say Yankees. Watch. Blue Jays only. Come on, Alexis. Joe's, she <laughs> says Joe's knows. Who's her, who's her team, Joe? How am I supposed to know? Who's your team, Alexis? Come on. The Yankees? I don't know. I don't know. You guys work tomorrow? No. No. Is that right? I'm sleeping. Uh, and then packing. 
You gotta do laundry. And laundry. You gotta help the you gotta help the girlfriend packing, you know. You gotta make her bacon and eggs in the morning and don't she, give her the she ain't got much to pack. I already did most of my packing. I kept up with my oh, laundry. Oh, oh, oh. So Red Sox. Red Sox. Oh, that's pain. And you're living in Brooklyn? How are you living? Mm-mm. Red Sox. Red Sox. Want me to bang on a garbage can for you? I mean, I can actually say this. That's almost as bad as being a pirate. Yeah, I knew you're a Red Sox. I just, I wasn't uh, thinking. I was thinking about somebody else. Yeah, yeah, she's a... Oh, okay. Bang on, bang on a... This, this ball I caught from Big Poppy, David Ortiz, in Toronto. I got a sign from Jamie Campbell, one of the sports in the thing. Hey, home run. I caught it right in my door. The $65 I sold, I got a bag. Nice. So, so, uh, cool. Alexis, do you, do you want me to bang on a garbage can so they know when to swing? I want to go to Fenway Park. Actually, I really want to go to. I want to go to Fenway Park. I want to just just go for the seat. I want to go sit on the monster, the green monster. That'd be really good. I would love to do that. You know. Oh my gosh! It is one thirty in the morning. Uh, let's go and watch the Blue Jays and Red Sox in Toronto. <laughs> she uh, just told me to. Sh she just told me to shush. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Your team needs. Your team needs a garbage can. Someone to hit on a garbage can for you guys to know in a swing. Yeah, I don't know. It's been like that for years. I'm just saying. I'm not saying, but I'm just saying. Guys, I really want to thank you guys for seriously for tonight's show. Uh, for the viewers out there, uh, tonight's show was uh, was great. Seriously, you know, everything was facts and facts checked and all that, and uh, really appreciate it. Uh, it's getting late here. I could go for hours and hours on end, but I gotta get some rest. I gotta make a few phone calls before I go to bed. Actually. One from uh, Dakota and the other one from uh, Chicago. Not till two. <laughs> oh, oh, this is getting out of hand, boys. We're fine. What's your location? Okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay, wait, wait. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I'm not going ace in the hole. It's I will say. 16 Pennsylvania Avenue, Washington, D.C., United States of America. Now, if you don't know what that address is, Noel, then you. I know what address that is. I know what address that is. I knew that from the back of my head. But I just remember exactly where I could go. If you want to come find me, I'm in Bethesda, Maryland, literally on the border of Washington, D.C. But I'll make it easier for you. That's his location. I'll make it easier for you. I'll come to Williamsburg, and then I'll tell you straight up, in a 1986 Mets jersey, which we beat the Red Sox that year for the World Series. Red Sox are cheaters. Oh, here we go. We got the cheaters, man. Oh, yeah. Like, huh? Huh? <laughs> Look at this guy. <laughs> this guy's on something tonight. <laughs> One day he's sad, and then he's vicious, and now he's just all relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> the many faces of Noah. <laughs> and don't forget, I'm going to let y'all know right now, Ace and the Hope is coming back this week. Uh, like I said, new location. Um, I know I haven't been on. I've been dealing with a lot the past week, but thankfully I'm good. <laughs> I know you waiting, Lexus. Listen, how about this? You wait for me on the corner. I'll be there. I promise. I'm not gonna say when, but I'll be there. Uh, you got one for that's one. This is one for you, Joe. Oh, hey, 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 Alina. Come on the show. Br br come on, bring her on. Send her the link. <laughs> no, send the link. You just have to put your name in. Come 
in, Alexa. Jump in. <laughs> Babe, I think Alexa's, Alexa's going to beat my butt. You asked for it. Damn. My girl can't even well, defend me. Did you have a show last night? Did you have a show last night? No, I ended up having to cancel it. I had some things I had to take care of. Oh, what is this? <laughs> I'm done. I am done. I am done. <laughs> Woo. You want to talk about a real team? Talk about the Toronto Blue Jays. Signed by Mark Burley, if you don't, don't know who that is. One of the greatest pitchers to ever put the white Sox uniform on. I can't. Another thing, Rasmus catching the ball. <clears throat> who wants? You know what? Who wants? Seriously, who wants to come and fight Booney? Do you know what that address was, right? Ghost, I know what that address was. I don't yeah. think I don't think uh, Jess and Joe understand what that address was, but. I know what that address was. We got we got somebody. Uh, let's see, are they on air? Unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. There hey, we go. Hey. Are they on air? Unmute yourself. We are. A little. She got a little feedback. Hello. How you doing, Jan? Good. Good to be with you. Yeah. I will fight you. Alexis is fighting everybody. What? You're echoing in the background, Jeanette. I think it's somebody watching next to you. I don't know. I don't know. Hello? Can you hear us? Oh, no, yeah. we can. There it's because the YouTube live was on. Yes. What, what were you saying, Noel? <laughs> Sorry, kind of froze. What you oh, oh no. so what I was saying was, go. This is why Ghost is saying LMFAO. The address that Ghost put in was an address here in DC, and I know Ghost said he had to do it, but the address that he put in was the people of the Republic of China. <laughs> I didn't think that. I thought it was, I thought it was like one of the military spots that you went to. That's a, I thought it was. It's China? My goodness. Yeah, that's all right, my beautiful. That's all right. That's that's okay. That's the that's a that's a long flight. It's a long flight. I just kind of there we go. Can you hear us now? Lena, Gina, and your family on the Booney Show. How are you guys doing? I'm good. How are you doing, Gina? Good? Jinx. Jinx. Yeah. So, Gina would be my sister, Molmeister. That's his daughter, my sister. Alina would be, I guess, cousin, if you want to say. That's her cousin, first cousin, and uh, they're two remarkable girls that have an amazing show on Instagram. They go live. They have makeup sessions at anything. They love. They're like a James Charles, but they're better than James Charles. <laughs> and they're really good people. Oh, thank you. you know, the good makeup <laughs> sessions. You know? Okay, know so hold on, hold on. I got a question. I got a question. So, how old are you, girls? You're Guess. muted. Yes. You're muted. Uh, ooh. Great. First, who's older? All right, who's who? Huh? Who's who? Alina is I'm right. Man, and I'm Alina. <laughs> okay, so Alina, I'm going to say is 11, 12. Okay. And you said Janan? That's how you yeah. say your name? Yeah. I'm going to say you're about the same age, like 10, 11, maybe 12. Okay. Um, so she's turning 13 in August. Okay. And I'm turning 12 in October. Okay, so yeah, guess what? You're close. I'm gonna need your you your Instagram so I can give it to my daughter. <laughs> she's yeah. into a whole she's into a whole bunch of makeup thing and she's in Alaska. So 
Alaska. I'm gonna give it to. I'm not in Alaska. But she's she's in Alaska. She's in Alaska with her mom. Mm-hmm. Here. What is your? You, you get your. I turned to underscore. My There's you know man where the show is uh, where it's leading to. You know. Mm-hmm. I had seven. I had 700 subscribers a couple days ago. Now I have 714 subscribers. Thank you very much, guys. We are really piling up. Now. Yeah, I'm just going to. I'm just going to. Okay. No, 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 no. Did you do it in the private chat? Yeah. Yeah, do it in the private chat. Don't, don't do it anything else. So chat. this is my daughter. Oh, she's, she's she's cute. Like her dad. Amazing. She Got is it. 11 years old. Yeah. And so um, she loves makeup shows and everything. So I'll, I'll definitely make sure that I copy and give it to her. I'm telling you, she's Jeanne is amazing. How she talks is like I'm talking to like a 25 year old. Hey, my name is Janelle at underscore Arafi, and the just the amazing. Oh, well, I have a makeup account. Amazing, you know, it really is. Yeah, I'll make sure that I give it to her. So if you see anything that says Isabella or anything like that, that's my daughter. Oh, did Jeanne, you're gonna make some changes in people's lives one day. Keep, keep doing the, what you love. <clears throat> okay. Oh that's, that's Alina. So it, it, it is almost two o'clock in the morning. Y'all just chilling on on YouTube. That's what it is. Yeah, this girl. Look, I put them right off. They're the guys. That are, you guys. Oh, you guys are what? Thirteen years old, and you're on the Booty Show at one forty-four a.m. Eastern time. What do you have to say to that, girls? I'll do this. To my <laughs> <laughs> Y'all troopers. Goodness. I'm barely like. Yeah, you later. Yeah, you are you good? Talking about you can't even say nothing. You like no. No, just <laughs> show <sure, sure>, on that one. <laughs> We're gonna, guys. I, seriously, it's, it's getting really late. You know, I can say yeah. few minutes, few minutes. I'm gonna go for two more minutes. We have a question ask. If not, we gotta stand up for a moment. Well, on, okay. I've been on here for three hours and fourteen minutes and forty-five seconds. That's a long time. Uh, it's been. A, I haven't had a show. Me, like that. Right? yeah. Me and Jeanette are doing an all-nighter. Oof. You've been watching the whole time? What? You guys been watching me the whole time? No, we haven't. You guys just tuned in? Yeah. Well, thank oh, you. You tuned in for the last 15 minutes? Come on. Well, I said 15 minutes for the last hour and 15 minutes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, we've been going at it. I remember I, I, I literally just looked up at that thing, and I remember it was saying 123. I was like, oh, we're not bad. Now it says 315. I'm like, woof. Guys, once again, I want to thank you all for coming out tonight and supporting your host, Joe Booney, and the support for Olivia and everybody out there. You know, there's a reason for everything in life, and she's with God right now. She's up there watching us, and we're going to come together, guys. And I love you all, and thank you once again for uh, coming together as a country. And everybody, stand up for a moment. Oh, I didn't have to wear that. Fellow Americans, we thank you guys very much for coming to the show. We'll see you next week, guys. Thank you for watching. Peace.